embrace what it takes for it pouring salt into the world willing to embrace what I'd lose for it to accept what I All right, start to drop the boys in the background a little bit, get ready. It's Wednesday night, Jewel Tandy. We are back. Let's cut the fellas off there. We love them. That is St. Ricketts is the band. The song is What Fire Cannot Burn at www.stricketts. Dot com. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another live episode of the You Show. Yo. Yo. I am Jeff the Shark Perini back at the ray, uh, a week off. You see, I got the nice American flag backdrop. It's got oh, behind me. I've got it on the show. Very festive for veterans. Yes. Thank you very much. We'll get into that uh, with veterans and all. But uh, it is um, 8.03. It is Wednesday night. And we're back to doing what we're doing after a week off. With me, as always, tonight, the co-hostess with the most. It's the sister from another mister and the most beautiful face in all of webcast. The one and only Miss Jewel, Tady Jewel. Good evening. Good evening, Jeff. How are we doing? And that was weird, taking a week off, I must say. It was. I, <laughs> I was lost. I didn't know what to do. Last, <laughs> last Wednesday, I kind of sat in a corner and just rocked. I, and I, I moved around. Got away from my desk for like a minute. <laughs> I'm telling you. And I and I had kind of a bitch of a time putting it all together. Like the table, the, the setup, the backdrop, Looks the great. computer. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like it. Um, very happy. We're very uh, fortunate to have such amazing veterans out there that fight for our freedom, fight for the people who can't fight for themselves. So happy Veterans Day to each and every one of you out there and the great work you do. Jewel, uh, speak to the veterans. Jewel. Oh, speak to them. I thought you said speaking of. I thought it was a segue. I'm sorry. Hey, all right. Yes. Uh, I, I thank you all for, for your service. Um, yeah. What we can't do and, and the brave people who fight for us. So thank you. I, I you know, my grandfather and uh, my two cousins served. So um, it, 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 it's just a day to respect them. And um, yeah, thank you all still still doing your duty and 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 we thank you thank you absolutely jewel i gotta tell you one thing real quick two things actually first of all tonight we tried two different outlets twitch and linkedin of course the, the snooty people at linkedin gave me a oops you're not authorized to go live on linkedin so to take them off uh it is our first venture on twitch and i do see that one person is watching us on twitch so oh, good hello. evening and thank, thank you. you hello <laughs> <laughs> Hello to Twitch. Uh, we're very new. We, uh, we're not new to know. this, but we're new to Twitch. So we just uh, hope you appreciate it. Take some time. Check us out. I'll drop a little more light on myself so I can shine. Uh, if you're new to us on Twitch, I'm Jeff. This is Jewel. Um, we are um, partners in crime here. We sleep together on occasion, even though I'm married. I don't tell my wife. I hope she's <sighs> not watching because you just heard. <laughs> I love it. No, seriously, we are... Um, best is the best we get along like family and we do this show here every wednesday night with great guests we talk fun we talk entertainment we talk local philly pa stuff and we have a great time so welcome and thank you for joining us thank you very much and i know how it worked somebody was on twitch and like wow look at the brunette and some dork with the bald hair bald head and here they are they did whatever stop <laughs> they might have well let's um being that it's Veterans Day, I did this for the veterans out there, uh, our special guest tonight, because she's gorgeous. And I know veterans love beautiful ladies. I don't know. I just threw it in there. Anyway, <laughs> our guest tonight is amazing, Jewel. She is a fitness expert, fitness coach, trainer, the whole nine yards, and a model. She's beautiful. She has just an incredible figure. And we're going to talk to her later about 
the regimen that gets her into this place. Her name is Miss Caitlin Rice. Here's some pictures here. Caitlin? Very excited, Jewel. Very excited to have her on. Took us a little bit of time to get her on. She's got a very busy schedule. Um, Little Wonder Woman. Oh, yeah, it's very patriotic. Uh, but I thank her uh, manager, Alex, as well for the communication and having Caitlin on. She'll be with us around 8.30 tonight. And then we um, revisit our lookout local segment, Jewel, which I know you love because you're big on the, the PA area people. And we are back at it tonight. Lookout local will feature a piercing artist, Jewel Piercing. So we're going to talk about piercing uh, with a real cool chick. Um, she's awesome. I love her. Bridget McAdams. Yes. Yeah, and she'll be on um, I'm sorry if I said sorry if I said chick. When I say cool, the word chick just kind of comes with it. Anyway, that's around, uh, yeah, you can clap, absolutely. That is around uh, 9.15 this evening. Oh, oh thank Veterans. you. Happy Veterans Day from the lovely Joey, the future host of the O Show. Someday it's going to be Joey and Robert Perini Jr. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be amazing. They have to do it once just for us. Be like, ah. I agree. That would be absolutely. I mean, by then I'll be, I don't know, 90, something like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jewel, um, Halloween, of course, came and went. We had fun on the program here the Wednesday before Halloween. We had Austin Wood. Uh, so let's thank Austin for uh, for awesome. coming on with us. He was awesome for the little bit we got him. He cursed a lot at the internet. Uh, <laughs> now, we talked a little bit about horror movies, and he came on. We had a great time with Austin. Uh, of course, Horror Night Podcast. Horror Night Podcast. Make sure I pronounce that nicely so people can go look it up. Because Austin does a... Uh, does a fun job out there. He's got a great show, and uh, he'll be coming back soon with new episodes. They take seasons off. People take seasons off. Joel, what is that? I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> we took a day. I'm like, where am I? Who am I? What do I do? <laughs> I feel like it's like a brand new show. I'm like, what's what's going on here? I'm like, <laughs> like, is that my face? Right. Uh, we. I was going to try Joel to get some veterans on instead of doing a top five. I was going to get some veterans on, but you know what though? It it gets a little tough. Some of them are still involved in certain military things and don't really want to be seen and heard and have their name flashed out there. So just know that we love you and we care about you all very much, whether you're active, whether you're um, inactive, whatever. We thank you. Yes. Excellent. Uh, before we do our top five list, uh, I want to do this real quick, Jewel, and it's from our good friends from the Bucks County Food Drive, and this is another event that is coming up this Saturday. Here's a picture right here. It's kind of like the Facebook invite. It's a Thanksgiving Day food and coat drive. And let me bring up the banner re uh, real quickly, as I promised I would. There it is. It is the um, Thanksgiving food and coat drive. It is this Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and it is at the regular spot for these pickups, Detective Christopher Jones Memorial Park, 499 Beachwood Avenue, Langhorn, PA. It benefits Family Services of Bucks County. New coats will be accepted because of COVID. They've got to be new coats. Um, frozen turkeys, gift cards, cash donations, the whole nine yards. Come on out and see these great ladies. Um, they're going to be working hard for us and for people in the jewel. This is such a great cause. Um, guys, if you're looking for new coats, I mean, places like Burlington, Marshalls, Gabe's, like anything helps. If you can get out there, please be safe, social distance, wear your masks. But uh, this is a great thing that, that's happening um, in our area once again. And I mean, they they just do so much. And, and thank you. And thank you for letting us share it. And hopefully this reaches someone else who just every little bit helps. It was amazing. Hey, I, I the song of the day. Um, <laughs> and hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up. Yeah. Yes, like and, and subscribe. One of our clothing that we got, comment down below. Not our clothing. We got to donate clothing. But <laughs> <laughs> um, Christina Beatrice is in the house checking us out. Christina, we love you. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, Christina is a good friend of ours. Max Scannish in the house with a thumbs up. Max, hello. We got to get you guys on here soon with some tunes, man. We need it. We need music, people. Yes. Um, I spoke to the woman today from the, um, the Thanksgiving Drive, Jewel, and she actually said that her 10-year-old son came up with the idea because every year they go to uh, the parade. Of course, this year, no parade because of covid and he came up with the idea, let's do something to kind of give back. And she was amazed by it. It's an incredible story. I thought it was 
awesome. Yeah, so people, that's awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. So if you're watching now or if you watch replays, whatever, and you're available this Saturday, you got a little time to take out, stop by. It doesn't have to be anything big. It could be a couple bucks. It could be, like I said, a gift card. Uh, like Jules said, it could be a coat from Gabe's. It doesn't even have to be anything terrific. I, Just, that's uh, nice stuff. Exactly. Hey, what's that, Gabe's? Oh, my God, I can't buy how many costs. Stacy Atwater in the house. Stacy, big smiles. Welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's time for everybody's favorite that the crowd likes to get on us with. It is top five time, Jewel Tatey. Top five list in honor of our guests, like we try to do. In honor of our guest, Caitlin Rice, we're going to do our top five favorite exercise, fitness kind of people. Oh, and I, didn't, for this. <laughs> I didn't realize how many I knew, but I'm going to, I'm going to get into it. And I, I got to tie at number five. You know why? Because I realized I left somebody off. So at number five, Jewel, we're going to do a tie. And it's going to be Billy Blanks. Yes. Yeah, I love Billy Blanks, man. His yeah, his stuff just really like I used to do it before, and then <laughs> and I got cool. uh, and you know, there's no disrespect to my man Tim Witherspoon Jr. either. Um, <laughs> Billy Blanks, and he's tied with Chuck Norris because every morning at six a.m. the infomercial comes on for <laughs> the um, what's that called the uh, uh, uh the Nordic? Wait, no, it's um, I forget the name uh. of it. All that Total Gym. Total gym. He's got the Chuck horrible. Norris. He's got the horrible toupee. And did you yeah. ever have a total gym? No. Did you succumb to the pressure of Chuck Norris? I don't think I'd be able to put it together, let alone use it for exercise. I really don't know. Yeah, I uh, want one of those mirrors. Did you see the new mirrors? And they have like the pulley bars and everything. They're mm. Yes. That it looks seems like kind of sci-fi Black Mirror-ish. I don't know. It's kind of scary. Mm. A little bit, but you know, whatever gets my ass in shape which is not much. Uh, number four, um, Kiana Tom, the Hawaiian. Oh, she's she's beautiful. I love her. Uh, she used to be on ESPN. She used to do the morning workout show, and then she got her own show and uh, still into the fitness thing. A lot of mine are like back in the day fitness people. Could you show you how much oh, I'm too. in that? Could you show you how much I'm in the exercise? <laughs> number three, the um, the great actor. Well, not great actor, but the actor and the, uh, the uh, weightlifter, Lou Ferrigno. Hey, I love you, friend. He was the Hulk on television. Uh, later on in King of Queens, he played Doug's neighbor. Love Lou Ferrigno. Good stuff. Number two, one of my all time favorites, Joy. And probably when I was like old enough, when I probably got to be like around 13 and start discovering women, I discovered this is like the hottest woman to me at the time. It was Rachel McClish, and um, she was quite a fitness woman. And there used to be the pictures of her for Bally Fitness Pump and Iron, and <laughs> gorgeous, like long dark hair. And oh, she's lovely, but uh. Awesome, too. She's been around a long time. Still into the game. Rachel McClish at number two. And number one, yes, I'm biased because whenever a person gets me to watch exercise videos and read up on them and find out about routines, you know they've got to be special. And it is tonight's guest, Caitlin Rice <laughs> at number one, because I am a massive Caitlin Rice fan. Joel Tatey, your <laughs> list. <laughs> Good list. Oh. Um, yeah, some of mine are old too. You know, it's through the years. What um, what I do, and I I love. I mean, I, I love when I'm done a workout. Okay, it just makes you feel good. Um, it it literally got me through quarantine and everything. And I, yeah. that's one of the things. I, I I mean, I just it's time. You know, you need you need time. You need to make time. Um, but number five, and this woman got me through my pregnancy holy crap tracy anderson has workout videos called the pregnancy project wow. and she has workouts and i would do them daily and they were for like each trimester she would go week by week so i was working out really really like hardcore before um i got pregnant and once i got pregnant i'm like i don't want to stop you know gain all this weight i still gained 60 pounds but she really she helped me through and, and just like muscle strength strengthening and all that so she's awesome uh number four another tracy um i dropped like 40 pounds at one point i think it was around like 2011 i'm like i'm just done i gotta start eating healthy work out every day um but tracy mallet i love her she's such a little firecracker and she has this cardio boot camp and it's these short really like high intensity workouts but man i tell you what they work so Gotta love that woman. Number three, another way like to drop weight like crazy is Zumba. I love Zumba. I got really into it. Um, it was 
actually before I got pregnant, I was going to be a trainer. I was going to go to Atlantic City and like take the five hour test. You have to bring like three changes of clothes because Jeez. you sweat so much. But Beto, he's like, you know, the creator of Zumba. And he, he like comes in on a lot of the workouts, like the one exhilarate I have. So he, he's funny and, and he gets in there. Um, but Zoom is great. It's so much fun. I love to dance. I have like a dance background. So that always is, I like to do different things. Like I can't just do cardio all the time. I'll get super bored. Um, but Zoom is fun. And when I don't, I just need someone to yell at me. Number two is Jillian Michaels. Ah, yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> that woman just stares into your soul. She's like, you gotta do that. But her, you know, six six pack abs and or just oh, I mean I have a lot of her tapes and she just when I need some motivation I just put that woman on and she just oh. she's so angry you woman. Do, you, you'll feel like crap and you will you will feel like crap if you don't work out so she's just that tough reminder that I need and I know you're not much of a fan this isn't about her personally but the woman that got me started my mom had all the tapes I still do the workouts on YouTube Jane Fonda. I mean, her cardio workout <laughs> was so much fun. And then she went into weight training and she's like, no, weight training is for women too. And you can build like lean muscle. And I just did. I She always like had the best tapes. And then she had other trainers on there that went on and did their own things. But uh, Jane Fonda, she's like cardio queen. I don't know what you mean. I don't like the person. <laughs> we don't do this stuff on the show. We're here to entertain and have fun opinions. And I'm just saying, she made mistakes, but her workouts are good. <laughs> all right. That, that's fair. Uh, more than fair, because that's what it's all about. Top five favorite exercise people. And we'll rerun ours again. And one of these 10 people might actually get me out of my seat to work out a little bit. I hope yes. so. Uh, 11 people. I'm sorry. I forgot because I had tie number five, Chuck Norris and Billy Banks. Billy Blanks. Number four, Kiana Tom, who could pretty much get me out of my seat to do anything. Number three, Lou Ferrigno. Number two, Rachel McLeish. And number one, of course, tonight's guest, Caitlin Rice, because I love her. Uh, Jewel, uh, J Jill. Jewel Tatey went with Jewel. <laughs> Jewel Tatey went with Tracy Anderson and the um, her pregnancy tapes, which to me sounds a little different. Exercise. <laughs> pregnancy tapes. <laughs> wow. Number four, Tracy Mallet. Number three, uh, Beto, was it? Beto. Uh, Beto. <laughs> the inventor of Zumba. Number two, the very angry Jillian Michaels. And number one, Jane Fonda. Terrific list. Absolutely terrific list. Great time, everybody. Todd West wants to know about Cassie's workout regimen. And I got to tell you, Todd. Oh, everything. <laughs> uh, right about now, she's a CrossFit. And she even asked me to, to ask Caitlin what she feels about CrossFit. I know Todd's thinking of the workout. I get it. She's probably going to work out. Jewel, when Cassie gets home, she's going to want to work out. Because I'm going to show you what I did here this evening. And everybody tune into this. Because, as you know, I go through any length for the show. Any length for a holiday. And tonight, Jewel, I got to pull the shirt down a little bit. Because I may or may not be wearing underwear. But I did come out with these um, wonderful stars oh. and stripes. <laughs> These are actually Cassie's former workout <laughs> pants. They are stars. They are striped. Turn off your legs. They are rather snug. I'm going to show. Leggings. I want to show Caitlin my booty. See if I got like. Oh, oh Jesus. See Don't if I got the workout. Oh, <laughs> I got pants on. Oh, you know. Anyway, they. You know, she's like, no way you're wearing those. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm wearing them because it's, it's Veterans Day. So. It's for all my female veterans out there. Hey, me and skin you type. You don't want to see from here down. <laughs> No, you don't want to see me. You're right. We don't do that very often here on the show. Um, I just <laughs> that was Max's thumb from earlier. He did not thumb my pants. That didn't sound right either. Let's just cut this, let's just act like we saw the pants and it's now over. <laughs> As Jewel tells her daughter, you better get out of here because Jeff's starting to get obnoxious. <laughs> anyway, God bless America. Uh, but yeah, let's uh Bless America. We used to say that all the time in college. That was our thing. We would like cheers and, and say God bless America. Let's uh, do some birthdays. Let's do a birthday here, Jewel Tady, to a former guest of the Yo Show. Today's uh, tomorrow's her birthday. 
uh, the very beautiful Miss Angie Stevenson. Hey, happy, happy birthday, birthday Angie. <laughs> Angie's gorgeous. We had a great time with her on our program um, out there in Cali. She did not disclose her age, but I'm pretty sure it's around 21, 22 years old. Of course it is. Of course, it always is. For females, they never age. I know Caitlin's age either. I'm also not saying that. But her age, I'm jealous of her age. She's a, oh, you know, I have to say a happy birthday to my cousin, Christy, too. Her birthday was yesterday. So very happy <laughs> birthday, Christy. She she watches quite a lot. We love you, Chris. We greatly appreciate that. Thank you, Chris, for tuning in. Happy birthday to you as well. Um, okay. Uh oh. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, I got a. Um, this is a message from Caitlin's manager. Says so she's logging in. She's trying to log in through YouTube. So that actually, uh, let me fix that real quickly. Let me send him the. Because uh, apparently he's giving her a browser issue. So I'm gonna be a few minutes delayed, but no problem. I will get that. Uh, meanwhile, Jewel Tatey is gonna sing, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Jewel, take it away. God bless. <laughs> oh, I can't live through that. I'm sorry. Um, I can't sing. So, and we can't play YouTube, or for more than fifteen minutes. Fifteen seconds. I heard you can't play a YouTube clip for more than fifteen seconds, or else you get censored. Did you know that? Really? Yeah. I did so, not. I do know that now. Um, because, actually, I yeah. did come to that because on Halloween, and I I forgot to give a. Uh, I forgot to give the shout out for the Halloween party to DJ Steve O'Neill. Did a great job helping us do the half hour uh, segment of our show. So thank you, Steve, for that. But he did Monster Mash and, yeah, it cut out after about 15 seconds. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I mean, 15 seconds, that's all you got. Because I was wondering how these YouTubers use other clips of things. Like, how do they get away with that? And they, you know, I guess monetize. But it has to be less than 15 seconds. That's yeah. why it's all choppy. Right. Yeah, exactly. It was very, um, it was scratchy and choppy. Had a little bit of an echo, but Steve did a great job kind of improvising because I showed up with a laptop and he's like, and nobody else is going to be able to hear you. So we got together a microphone, speaker uh, and all that last that minute. Awesome. So it was a little echoey, but it was, it was great. We had a great time. Um, <laughs> Steve Jordan, I'm not wearing women's pantyhose. I'm wearing exercise <laughs> pants because they're I'm stars and stripes. <laughs> Wearing spanks. Uh, my wife, here you go. Okay, for those who wanted 1,000 weighted box step ups. There you go, Cass. I don't even know what that is. I always like give her a little her beast mode. picture's cute. I know, not cute. I always give Aww. her little beast mode emojis and stuff now because she, she gets to be beast mode. Todd West with the thumbs up. So, Caitlin Rice will be with us shortly. Uh, she's logging on, trying to work uh, the computer magic and, and get. Um, I'm going to give him the link to view it as well. It's world of technology, folks. I'm good, but I'm not that good. Sometimes I'm a little sluggish. <laughs> I have to um, say your costume looked fabulous. Halloween night. The devil's... I mean, it really worked out. I, I'm so sad I couldn't be there. I had so many issues the past couple of weeks, and Jeff knows, but thank you for, once again, just steering the ship and, and holding down the fort. Halloween looked amazing. I'm sad I wasn't a part of it, but you guys did a great job. And thank you. It's just, I mean, we have to do what we can right now. And that was just, that was super cool. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. You did. <laughs> and thank you to uh, the group at Murphy's uh, for helping us put on the show. Thank you for random people that came on the show. We had, some people that were at the uh, Halloween event said, look, I'm going to go on the show and we'll talk. So it was kind of neat how he did the mic thing. The mic was kind of in front of the stage. Yeah. And I had, I like, like, that. Social, had like a social distancing thing too. And people really had a good time. Some people were heckling and throwing jokes in the background. It was great. Uh, Steve, I have no idea what a weighted box step up is, but I get the feeling I'm going to see all about it. <laughs> Come about 930 when she gets home, unless she gets here while Caitlin's still on, then she might want to show Caitlin what it is. I'm sure she knows what it is. But she said, make sure you ask her about CrossFit. CrossFit is, um, like I said, people either love it or hate it. I've never tried it. I'm always intrigued. Um, but she said, you know, certain uh, people in fitness are funny about it. So 
We'll have to ask Caitlin. Yeah, I would I would try anything once. I've never done CrossFit. I, I wanted to go with Cassie a couple times, but it's just, uh, I like to switch it up. You know, I can't do the same thing twice. I was, you know, an athlete in high school, so I like to play sports more than anything. But, uh, yeah, I like to switch up the workouts. You need a little variety, you know what I mean? <laughs> I agree. I like to switch up the workouts. Sometimes I 12-ounce lift with my right hand. Sometimes I 12-ounce lift with my left hand. You know, build that muscle mass. <laughs> Says the guy in the Britney Spears shirt and his wife's exercise pants. Renee. <laughs> it's it's hot. I'm, I'm sweaty. It's actually hot in here. These lights, you know, I got to get the ring light like you got because this stuff I set up around me just really just boils me. You know what? Since they're having like Black Friday sales on random days, I missed where you get like the big ring light. Like I'm trying to hook up a whole studio because, you know, who knows the future, but you can get some great deals on ring lights on Amazon. That's what I might have to do as well. Now, there's whispers about a 2021 version of a studio at a location still to be named. That is down the line once it's closer to probable. Uh, a lot of great stuff coming out of that. So Yosho does have big well, plans. Uh, well. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we waited for, she is now backstage. Uh Fitness guru, I like to call her. Fitness expert and trainer and model. One heck of a beautiful woman. We were very excited to speak to her about her program. Ladies and gentlemen, get up for our guest tonight, Miss Caitlin Rice, everybody. Oh, my God. I'm so excited to be on. It took me, like, way too long, technologically speaking, to set this all up, but here we are. <laughs> awesome. And, Caitlin, thank you so much for taking time to come out. I did get uh, some messages from your manager who said you're working it out. You're still early, which is great. And really, um, I just want to thank you so much for, for taking the time to be with us. I, I can tell just from reading into your program, reading into your life, how, how busy your routine is. Uh, we lost my co-host. She'll be back in a minute, but okay. <laughs> we'll start with you anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so let me get into it. Let me uh, bring up the questions. The first thing I want to ask before we get into anything. Okay. I, I read this today and I could not believe it. And I feel for any person that lives with you, any man that lives with you, et cetera, your morning routine. Oh, God. <laughs> can, you, can you hit us with this morning routine? Because it sounds absolutely um, insane. <laughs> yes, it is. It is pretty crazy. And yes, you are right. My man has like pretty much the opposite schedule. He does actually some really cool like uh, streaming for videos and stuff. So sometimes we're like passing each other in the night. She's I'm waking night. up to bed, so it's totally different. Um, I, yeah, I, I love being an early riser. Um, my mornings are special to me just because I just feel like, I don't know, like the sun hasn't risen yet. It feels like I'm truly like present and uh, like alone in my space. I get to do my shit. Um, so yeah, I usually wake up every morning at 4 a.m. I take a freezing cold shower because I find that it like just shocks your system. It wakes you up. Like I can't, I'm addicted to it. And since I started cold therapy, like I really haven't been sick. Like it, it, it changes a lot for your morning. Um, and then, yeah, and then I head downstairs, I deal with the dog, and uh, we do our shit. And then I, I like to read a um, personal development book. I also read a nonfiction book at the same time. Um, I do my breakfast. It's just kind of, for me, meditating wasn't really something that was going to be like, something I got really like just being still meditative, but I find like practices like that being on your own can be meditative. And so I kind of get the same. Oh, made a freeze. Now. There we go. Ah, there we go. Um, yeah. Another thing real quick I wanted to ask, because I also read this, that you mentioned that you do some of your basic skills uh, with your opposite hand, like brushing your teeth, et cetera. Explain yes. to people what, what that is about. Because that's very interesting. I never even really thought of it. Yeah. So I listen to, um, I listen to a lot of different podcasts on like, you know, self-help development. Like I read books like that. So, and I found it, I, I love anything to do with psychology. So I found it fascinating that when you actually use your left hand, you're stimulating a different side of your brain, which actually primes you for the whole day to use a different side of your brain than you're used to usually doing. So I love to at least try to do that. And now I found that I'm actually a lot more dexterous using this hand wow. just through brushing my teeth. So that's pretty crazy. I can't do anything with my left hand. I, you know, I, I, I told that you never talk. say can't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, it, yeah, I, I tried to play. I had some lessons growing up playing the piano. I, I heard you play the piano as well. Yes. Um, left hand is just something I try. Yeah. Um, 
and my daughter's left-handed and she's pretty ambidextrous but yeah. uh how how do you think that um i'm sorry <laughs> um, <laughs> do you okay. just ever have days where you wake cheers, up cheers by the way cheers. Oh, yes <laughs> <laughs> i got thrown off hey. <laughs> But do you ever have days that you're just not feeling it, that you wake up and you're like, oh, <laughs> here we go again? Yeah, dude, honestly, and it's funny that you asked this. So we're just coming off my birthday weekend, and it was so fun. It was magical. But it took a lot out of me because I had to plan this, you know, 100 people plus party. I've never thrown anything like that. It ended up being perfect. But it took a lot out of me, a lot of, you know, moving parts, a lot of things going on. And it had to be so on and so present and, you know, deal with all that stuff. So, it, you know, the day after, I'm just like, oh, I just want to breathe. And then I was feeling a little bit under the weather. One of my clients said that she ended up getting COVID. So I was just trying, I've just been trying to play it safe. Like, I didn't know if I, I got tested, I'm, I'm good. But yeah, I've been feeling like tired and like, you know, but like sometimes your body tells you all that you need to know. And sometimes you do need to take a step back and sometimes you do need to rest. And for me, it's so hard because I like, I feel guilty not doing enough. And I'm like, I'm super type A. Like if I'm not always like on working, like getting my shit done, I'm like, I'm like, girl, I don't know how to sit down and watch a movie. I'm like, no, I'm like, yeah. something else could be could be getting done. <laughs> but yeah, so it's been nice that the past few days I've actually just been unwinding, just taking rest for myself. And so today I finally like feel better and I'm like ready to go back to work tomorrow. So yeah, like honestly, like your body tells you everything that you need to know. That That's what I was telling Jeff earlier. Like um, the quarantine actually made me slow down. And that's the number one thing I did was work yeah. out more. Um, now that I have a killer commute and I'm sitting in an office chair all day, like yep. it's, it really like eats away your soul sometimes. It but does. Yeah. How, what advice would you give for someone like me who, I mean, it, it, time is everything. I know you have to make the time, but, and I try to do little desk workouts here and there, but what would you say to like squeeze it in? <laughs> I would say that if you're not, if you're not going to be present in what you're doing, take a break. If your mind is elsewhere, that's not honoring the thing that you have at hand. And that means that it's going to take way longer for that, for that bullshit to get done. You know what I mean? So like, if you're not there getting it done, you need to be elsewhere. You need to be taking a break or doing something else and then come back to it because you're not honoring what you're doing or where you're at, like by doing something else, like being somewhere else in your mind. And so I find that if I have shit to get done, I need to be like, okay, what, what, what do I need to like line up to make this happen? And what mindset do I need to be in to get that done? And how can I do that? How can I sit down, be present for that, and like just get it done? You know what I mean? Because people spend so much time looking busy or being busy, but I'm like, you could get all that shit done in like literally like two hours. Like you just you just spread it out throughout your day, and then you get all stressed out because you're so busy. But it's like you're only that busy because you didn't get your shit done, right. you know. <laughs> and so yeah, so it's all about mindset. It's all about you know. Do you believe in like quick workouts? Um, there's there's myths yeah. all over the place, but I believe the- in I believe mm-hmm. in get your shit done when you can. Like yeah. absolutely. Like a quick workout is always better than no workout. Like right. a couple minutes of work is always better than no work at all. And so you just gotta do you just gotta do what you can, but you also have to be graceful with yourself and realize that sometimes you can't do all you can't do it all. You yeah. know, and sometimes things do need to get like put put, you know, for later. One and more question to... about timing, Jeff. I'm learning yeah. a lot. I had just that time. <laughs> All right, hey, that's what she's here for. Perfect. But my my sister is heavy into like weight training and all that, and I'm just more of like go with the flow. You know, I I played sports all my life, but I like to be active. But cardio bores the hell out of me uh, mostly, <laughs> so sure. I like to do different things. Um, but I do. I feel so much better when I do it, and I just get it done. And you're done yeah. early in the day. What do you think is the optimum cardio time per day? So first of all, it depends on your goals completely. Like I, um, I like to make my clients work smarter, not harder. So the, so with cardio, that's my one thing that I use to manipulate different programs because it like most, most people I don't have doing any. So if I can manipulate your diet and your workout routine, you don't have to be doing cardio. I use cardio as a tool just to like kick things into high gear, um, add a little bit more calorie burn, a little bit more fat burn. Like that's what I use basically towards the end of your goal, like just to really like kick things in. So it just really depends on your programming. Um, For me personally, I know that I overdo it. Like my coach tells me, because guess what? I've got a coach, all coaches need coaches too. Like, you know, it just like, if I do my own programming, I'll be, I'll be at the gym all day. And so sometimes like 
he tells me he's like, like Caitlin, like you're too, like your, your heart is already like programmed. Like, my, like for me to pop anything, I got an Apple watch. It was the worst like purchase ever because I realized how many calories I was burning. And because I have a naturally like low heart rate and because I work out so often, my endurance is way up. So for me to pop anything high on this, which is, is how you like burn calories on here. It takes so much. So I'm like sprinting on the Stairmaster and I'm like, I'm killing myself. But like sometimes like, you know, just in the past few days that I've taken a break, that's actually really good for my body because tomorrow when I go back, my heart rate might pop a little higher because it's not, you know, it's been off for the past few days. So yeah. things like that are really important to like play into the way that I program my clients. I would say it's different for everyone. Honestly, it depends on your goals 100%. But I mean, it's, it's science. Like if, if, if all you can do in your day is do cardio and just to get that like calorie burning, do it because you know, like it, it just depends on your goals, but like any movement is better than no movement in my opinion. So I don't know. We would have to talk about your goals specifically. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I need to get on this like ASAP. Yeah. <laughs> I'm motivated yeah. already. <laughs> you can get on the app. I have downloaded the app. I've been yes. crazy to even start it yet. Caitlin Rice Fit is the app. If people want to check it yeah. out, download it on the app store. And you get great advice from Caitlin on workouts and yes. meal prep, et cetera. Now, Jewel is into the hardcore workout part. I'm into the corner cutting and the cheat stuff <laughs> when i see somebody as fit as you like you know trim you know the excellent body in great shape i gotta ask about cheat days what do you do for cheat days what kind of things do you eat and pick at that people that are into working out can feel safe about their snacks you guys i just came off a few days of taking rest i am <laughs> drinking wine and I just <laughs> ate lunch, like a massive lunch. I had a burger, I had fries, I had all those things. You do not need to limit yourself on these on these types of things. Like you, you don't need to like stay at home and like, you know, <laughs> like being like being fit doesn't mean that you don't have a social life, that you don't do these things that like normal people do. It just means that you're more consistent with the things that they don't do. It means that throughout the week you're putting your time in your like the majority of your time, let's be real, like you know, you're at home, you get to make those choices at home what you're eating. So during the week, just be clean, like with every single diet plan that I issue out, I always do a 1000 calorie cheat meal every weekend. And guess what, when you're eating consistently clean for your body that whole week, that cheat meal actually revs up your metabolism. So you get to make eating unclean work for you. Like wow. after Yeah, so after a cheat meal, I always weigh less. And I look way more shredded because my muscles are full. So you can make it work for you. You just have to understand how your body works. And the biggest part about me, like loving being a coach is that I just, I get to tell you how easy it can be once you have someone like telling, you know what I mean? Cause it's just science. Like, and it's not even that difficult. It's like, I can tell you exactly what to do. And it's just like that. But it's like, I want to, I want to give you the tools that you can go out and like do this on your own without me later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it's a lifestyle thing. It's like, you just have to like dial in like what works for you. and like. It's, it's, it's honestly, it's not hard. It's not that hard. So you do have to put the work in, but, and, and be dedicated and like, you know, disciplined. But at the same time, I find it way easier like to be disciplined when you know that like that cheat meal is coming or like when you know, like, and then that I appreciate date nights way more often because there's only one of them a week, you yeah. know, and you're just like, oh yeah, like, you know, so it's exciting. Like you make it work. That's a great way to look at it. And you, yeah. um, uh, you started off in the modeling world and then found, yes, found fitness. So how, how, tell us about your journey and what brought you to this point. Um, so I actually, so I was pre-law. I wanted to do international adoption law, um, working with kids is like, nothing makes my heart happier than work with kids. And I know that like nothing is going to make me happier than like being a mom one day. But um, yeah, for now, like I, I'm doing health and fitness, I would love to find a way to bridge the gap between um, working with kids and then working with like people in health and fitness. So I would love to eventually do something with um, with foster youth um, because I just feel like giving them like an outlet like for activity and for fitness and just like learn, like teaching them from a young age, like how to be healthy, that would be amazing. But we're not there yet. Um, but yeah, so when I was, I was in college, I actually met my ex, he was, awful but uh, he got me into health and fitness um because he was he was just like big into bodybuilding so 
I started like working out more, like my body started changing. And then I went viral on Instagram. Like it didn't make any sense to me, but I started posting like, cause I was like, look at these little baby muscles. And then I would post a photo and it went viral. And so it was like, you know, that was like super nice to see. And then once um, we were navigating a long distance relationship, once I realized that I was like about to graduate college, um, I already had this massive social media presence and I was like, okay, well, I double majored in business and political science. I was like, let's use my business degree. Like I already have an audience, which most people don't. And that's all I need to like launch a company. So I was like, let's just go ahead and do that, see what happens. And it blew up and yeah, and the rest is history. So we started doing that and then um, I launched my clothing line. And yeah, so what I do is, is multifaceted. So there's the social media aspect where I do like brand endorsements, sponsorships, like all that kind of stuff. Um, and then I do online coaching. So I work with people all over the world, not just people here in San Diego. Um, and then I guess I added a fourth part because now I am doing in-person stuff, which I haven't been doing for a long time, but COVID broke out. And I don't know, I was looking for a gym because my gym shut down. Like I used to go to a Globo 24 seven, you know, uh, so they closed down. So I was looking for a gym and I, I stumbled upon this amazing, um, personal training gym. So they don't offer memberships to anyone you have to be there with a trainer, which means that like there's 36 of us trainers. And so in at a time, you know, we're only with like a few clients at a time. So it's never overcrowded and it's a beautiful gym. So it's just, it's a great environment for people that are really unsure of the gym. They don't know like how to work out and like they're not comfortable with being around creepy dudes right. and whatever. <laughs> so yeah, so I love it as like my home base for me to work out. And so I started doing in-person training and then I started running boot camps and like I just realized how much I miss like human connection and like being with other people and like being a part of their journey that way, because honestly, I love my online clients and it's amazing, but like being in person with my clients and I'm like, Ooh, I'm like, look at that, you know, and like you see your bodies changing before your eyes and like you get to spend time with them and you become friends with them. And that's been huge for me too. So yeah. So it's just, I'm a busy lady. It's multifaceted. I do a bunch of shit. Yeah. And, and that's the same with us. Like we, we love seeing our, our, our people on here, yeah. but it was so nice to have the studio and that I mean, yeah. like short lived before COVID. Um, do you feel like COVID helped your business and what is one success story that sticks out for you? Like a person being coached or inspired by you? Well, um, so this has been like by far, like one of the best years of my life personally, because I feel like, if COVID didn't bring up the hustler in you, like it's not in you, you know what I mean? It's like, this showed everyone exactly who they are. And I feel like it showed you where your priorities are. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about anyone that like wanted to stay at home and like, you know, play poor me and like not do anything. But for, for a lot of us, it, it, it lit the fire under my ass. I lost 40 pounds this year. I, I didn't have a gym to do it in. And I worked out in a very small apartment gym I, I, I spent hours and hours in that, in that gym. Like it, like it will make me tear up, but like I lost 40 pounds in that little small room over COVID all by myself, like doing it on my own. And like, now I can tell you, like, I feel so different as a person, like the, tra like the trajectory of my life has changed in this past year. And I do have COVID to thank for that. So it's not all been, you know, I understand it's been like really hard for a lot of people and it's awful. But like, for me, I, I, I've had, the best one of the best years of my life like there's been a lot of like deep struggles and i've seen a lot of people that i care about like deeply struggle but a lot of people have realized how important other things are in their life than just what they thought before going into it so that to me is inspiring as well and like you realize who's close to you like where your priorities lay what 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 things you want to do because i felt like a lot of people going into COVID were the people that were like, oh, if I only had time for the gym, if I just had time for this, and now you have all the time, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? You know? So there are those people. And then there are those same people was like, oh, well now we, uh, I'm like, now you have the time and now you're going to complain about more things. So it's like, <laughs> you know, but for a lot of other people, it really like helped them dial in like where they wanted their priorities to be. And they did have time and they were people that genuinely did not have that much time before and now they do and i've been lucky to be a part of these journeys and like help you know single moms and like just it's amazing watching all these people grow but i've seen so many people grow immensely through this whole entire 2020 
shit show. So yeah. So that's been super inspiring. Um, as far as like person, like clients, I had, I had this one client, this story stands out to me a lot because like, it'll make me cry. But, um, so her husband found me and, um, hired me to train her. She had stage four cancer. Oh, wow. And she, she's a, she's a mom of four. She went out of her way. She put it like, she knew she was going, like she had the, like the, like the last bit of energy. I can show you her before and after pictures. She, she ended up passing and she, she left this world with a six pack full on shredded, like looking amazing. And she did that to show her kids, to show her husband, to show everyone around her, like what could be done when you are working through immense hardships. And to me, that was the most inspiring thing I think I'll ever, I'll ever see. Like she was pushing through chemo. She was pushing through like not having the energy to do these things and her body, like just pushing her body to the absolute max it can go while being a mom, while being a wife, while dealing with the thought of your, your life ending, like with all of that, she pushed through. And like that to me was insanely inspiring. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. That is amazing. I felt I felt lucky to be a part of that journey and that they chose yeah. me as, as the coach. Like that was insane for me. That's and that's amazing. That's amazing. And, yeah. and we thank you for that story right there. That that really is something because a lot of people feel that obviously it's a horrible disease, but when you get it, it's it. Shut it down. Yeah. It day. I mean, I know my father passed from cancer, but he was the same way. My father just refused to stop, kept going until he couldn't go anymore. So to hear that and to have you inspire somebody like that is pretty amazing. Um, on the on the lighter side of it, um, obviously being a coach, a lot of people say you got to be tough. You got to be yeah. stern with people. Have you ever had like the housewife come in and doing the booty boot camp and looking at you and say, leave me alone, lady, or back off or <laughs> something like that? Have you ever like had somebody kind of just give up on the program for being too tough? Totally. I mean, I've had, for the most part, I think that I'm very kind. And I think that my energy is like very like, I accept you and I see you and I know that you're struggling, but like, I also share how much I've struggled. So it's not just me like, sitting on a pedestal telling you to do stuff like I've done that too I know it sucks and so like when I'm like putting someone through a program if the movement I know is like super hard I'll do it with you and even if like that doesn't work out for my day like that's like an extra workout I'll do it with you I'll grind with you I'll sweat with you and I'll cry with you because I know it sucks but like let's go so for the most part like no I feel like people don't you know end up giving up on their program and like people have told me that I'm gentle but tough but not in a mean way. Um, I've definitely had people that like, I barely know like boot camps. Like I just met, they're like out. I'm like, okay, bye. Like, I, I'm not going to chase you in the parking lot. I've got 20 other girls like in here <laughs> yeah, working, yeah. you know? So, and then they don't show back up. And then, you know, sometimes they do. Sometimes they're curious and then they show back up and I'm like, all right. I'm like, let's work them. Yeah. Cool. If you show up, you have to put in the work. That's just yeah. a given, especially, I mean, I mean, you are paying the money too. Yeah. To do it, also, it also blows my mind the amount of people that would love to just like be there just to like, again, it goes back to like being present and like putting the actual effort into what you're doing because so many people just show up and they're just like, oh, this is going to get, the, I'm, I'm here. So I'm doing the right thing. But it's like, no, if you're not here, uh-huh. you're not here and you're not doing the yeah. things and you're not, you know, you're half-assing it. You're you half-assing it and no. you're already here. So why waste your time? Yeah. So yeah, some people do do that. And I'm just like, all right, see ya. And you yeah. mentioned uh, you mentioned doing it up here as well, which is important. It's got to be a mental aspect as well. You got to think it and you have to be in it. It, mentally. Is, it is all, it is all, mental. it is all your mind state with all of these things that you do in life. It is all, it is all where you're, like where your mindset is. And you can period. tell when and, you're in a workout, and, like if, if you're half yeah. ass there. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like, yeah. oh then you're not going to get the results that you want. So what's the point of half asking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then I feel like, I feel like for a lot of people, um, I've been asked a lot, like, how do you like, like what happens? Like when you just like push through something and like, to me, I'm like, Oh, that just was like second nature to me. But like, when I think about it, like I remember when I first started, like sometimes your body, like not being used to working out, like you're in physical, you're in physical pain. Like you're like, I'm going to yeah. break my shit if I continue <laughs> doing this. Yeah. So like, Sometimes it's like, it's just like, you know, like you're not actually going to break any of your, you know, you're not doing the movement wrong, but if you like your mind can make your body push so much harder. Like I sometimes like, I'm like, I black, I black out and I'm like, oh, I just did that. I'm like, there's a new PR. 
but you know what I mean? But like, that's your mindset. Like that's you pushing your body past that point. And like you, you can do that, but that's, again, it, that's a mindset thing. I have to ask you, is there any like one thing that you were doing wrong in the past that you tweak now or something unhealthy that you thought was helping, but really wasn't? Um, is there any like one habit that you broke that will just is changed forever because you have the knowledge you do now? Uh, well, I mean, I still like, I still have an un unhealthy relationship with like, like I said, like I guilt myself if I'm not doing enough work. And I also like have a hard time, like, like slowing down. I know that that's unhealthy. And like, sometimes I know, like sometimes when I do listen to my coach and I'm not like cheating on him by doing extra cardio, <laughs> <laughs> I notice like the biggest changes in my body. And it's crazy because it's like, it's a mental thing for sure. Because after I lost all this weight, um, my coach was like, you know what, we got to, we got to readjust. Like we got to like redo this. So then I gained 10 pounds and I was freaking out about it. I thought I like looked horrible. I took side by side photos. I look way better being now 10 pounds heavier than I was, you know? And so for me, it's like a mental thing. But, like yeah. I definitely, I definitely have like blinder vision with things and I get like obsessed with it. And like, I just like, you know, that's like something that I definitely need to like take a little bit, a little, I know it's unhealthy and I know I like need to like, not be like that fixated on it. But I mean, again, it's a, it's a mindset thing. Like I identify that as, you know, I know, I know when I'm getting like, okay, like you should chill. Like you don't need to go do that extra cardio. It's not going to make you look 20 minutes of Stairmaster better for tomorrow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and it's, it's but that's, addicting, but you, you know, you're, your body needs a break every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> but like, that's something that I've like definitely um, dealt with in the past too, because I used to have an eating disorder. So I think that it just becomes like, it's not so much of what you're doing. It's just like being obsessed about it and the end results instead of enjoying the journey, enjoying the process and like just breathing and like being like, okay, like you're fine. Like, you know, so like that, yeah, that's always been like kind of an issue for me. Just like going too full out one thing. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, two things I want to ask, kind of not related at all, but one I was told I had to ask. My wife wanted to know your opinion about CrossFit because she's big into CrossFit. She loves it. She gets deep into it. <laughs> and she said, you know, she said people either love it or hate it. So if you can give us just a quick synopsis on your feeling about CrossFit. Okay. So I love my man. I do. He's a, he's a CrossFitter. So, <laughs> so, okay. So this is my thing with CrossFit. Um, just basically I train for aesthetics. I train for my body to look a certain way. Like I focus on muscle groups. I focus on shaping muscles based on what I would like to look like. And so me and my clients, like basically all work on the same thing. Like, I'm like, what would you like to change about? You know what I mean? Like, what would you like? Do you want to be stronger? Do you want to have a smaller waist? Do you want to have a bigger butt? Like whatever we're working on, like with bodybuilding, you can like really like focus in on the style of weightlifting just specifically for that with CrossFit uh, CrossFit bodies, like, like you, like you're not training for aesthetics. I think that it's amazing that like what, like some of the people can like lift, like you can make amazing strength gains and some of their movements are probably going to hurt you. Um, I don't think that they're that functional. I think that a lot of those like, jerky movements are not great for your, your body. Um, but I mean, if you're, if you're doing them right, it's just, it just depends on your goals. Again, like if you're trying to like, you know, feel like a badass and like really like push your like endurance, like do that, like go ahead and do CrossFit. If you're training for aesthetics, you're not going to get the body you want doing CrossFit. Understood. So that's, that's good and fair. It, it does. It, it motivates her. She gets into it. I think, like you said, I think the lifting and kind of like grunt and let out mm -hmm. is the release she needs. So that that's excellent. Um, the thing yeah, I mean, it's, it's also, it's also a competition thing. So like, that's why sure. my man loves it the most. Like he wants yeah. to, he wants to like bury people. He wants to like be the one that like did the best with that workout, which is, which is, you know, which is cool too. Like if that's what, if that's what motivates you and that's what gets you to be burning the calories and like in the gym, I'm not going to hate on it, dude. It's, you know, whatever makes you happy. But again, if it, like, if you're training for your goals specifically, you don't need to be doing that, that kind of shit to get where you want. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. That's my big concern. I mean, as I got older, you know, I'm just trying not to hurt myself so I can work out the next day. Yeah. And it seems like once I get going, 
like there goes a leg or there goes an arm you know i have mm-hmm. tendonitis in my arms because of sports and then my leg yeah. my knee um have you ever had an injury and uh how, how do you how do you deal and how do you get through it so i've been super super lucky with um well, I mean, with my train, I've never had a sports related injury. Um, I've had a lot of broken bones, like as a kid and whatnot. But as far like I, it, I just take care of my shit. Like I go to my, I went to a chiropractor for the first time. Multiple people have told me they're like, you're very even. Like everything is very even. But I spend so much time being very careful with my workouts, being very careful with my stretching routine, with everything. And honestly, it comes down to genetics as well. Like I'm very evened out. Like you know. But I do, I do a lot of stretching. I do a lot of foam rolling. Like, so I take care of my body. Like I, I eat healthy. And so now like I haven't run across any like major injuries or any issues like that. And you can avoid all of that for your whole life. Like, you know, if you just take care of your shit. Yeah. That's awesome. I have to uh, be easy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm prone to injury. So I just have to be gentle. <laughs> I used to, I, everyone used to say that about me too, but like, you know, like, I don't know. Again, it goes back to, I will tell you this multiple times, like your mind body connection is one of the biggest things. Like it's the difference between like an old lady, like missing a step. And why did she do that? It's because she wasn't present, like focusing or looking around at her situation. Like, so I work with a, I work with a brain place. They actually study um, brain function and reaction times and everything. And I've been working with them for a little while and it's been insane watching how much my performance and how like, just how much more connected I feel with my body. But yeah, I would definitely suggest doing anything like that, like working with companies that do that because that's huge because then you're, you are avoiding injuries because you're so like hyper, you're basically superhuman. Like when you're so aware of everything around you, like it's huge. Yeah. Reaction right. time. Whoa. The, um, Last thing we want to touch on, because of course we get into exercise. <laughs> this, so my, my wife is there in the background, just straight from CrossFit. We mentioned CrossFit, and it, you know, you can see it later on in the program. Um, Hi. <laughs> uh, uh, we want to talk about a little something different than exercise and workout and all okay. that. And that's your rescue, your little pup, Loki. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. good boy. So Who's that? Is he high? Oh. Who's that? Oh. Yeah, that's my that's my little boy. He's always in my lap. That's amazing. <laughs> mine was mine took off. He was sitting down here the whole time, and then I guess once my wife walked in, he figured it was time to go. But uh, <laughs> that's awesome. So uh, again, if you want to learn more about Caitlin Rice and get into her program and and check out her amazing results of her work, you can download the app Caitlin Rice Fit on the App Store. Yeah. Uh, you can find it on Instagram at Caitlin Rice Fit www.caitlinricefit.com for the uh, one of the most amazing fitness women I've ever seen. I, like, I actually watch. Oh, thank you. I don't watch much, and I watch you, and I'm just fascinated because, like I said, your body is amazingly sculpted, and you can see that the dedication. It never looks like never looks like you're straining. God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I I will say this. I will say this. So, what I tell all my clients, like in this. This will put it all into perspective. You don't have to work nearly as hard to maintain what, like when you finally get to you where you, where you're looking to go, like when you finally like lose all the weight or you get to like that, like your, your ideal weight, you don't have to work as hard to maintain that because your body it's, it becomes like homeostasis. Like your body is used to that. And so it will fight off like whatever, like, you know, like you can, you can, you can mess up for a week and you go on vacation or do whatever. But you just got it. You just got to lock in that amount of time. You just got to promise yourself like two, three months, nothing. Like, you know, you're just going to be laser focused on that. And like, we can get you there, dude. But once you're there, it's not, it's not, you know, doing that. Like when you're in the, in the grind mode of like, you know, you have, you have weight to lose or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, there's not much room for fucking up and you can't like keep yo-yo, yo-yoing your program. But like, once you're there, way easier not that you can go back to like eating cheeseburgers all day but i'm just saying like once you're there it's so much easier to maintain and that's all i ask i'm just like let's lock in for just this little while and see where we can go let's push it and when you're there you want to do it you're like oh no (laughs) i'll coach you let's go yes i'm I'm so ready another lockdown is upon us let's go (laughs) 
the app is on. It's easy to uh, easy to navigate the ad and place uh, the app rather. And I've got all the information down the bottom. You yeah. can find them. Uh, Caitlin writes for first. Oh, uh -oh. say hi. <laughs> Yay! Cool. Thank you. That's awesome. So, Caitlin, I want to thank you again for taking the time out. We'd like to have of you course. back a little way, a little bit down the line, if that's okay with you. We'll get back. And of talk course. Back Excellent. Yeah. And uh, if you're ever in the East Coast, come out and kick our ass sometime. Yeah. Yeah, it. I would love that. <laughs> yeah. So nice uh, to meet you guys. Thank you so much for having me on. I love it. You guys are awesome. Thank you very thank much. You so much. Yeah. The amazing yes. and the incredibly fit Miss Caitlin Rice. Caitlin, thank you very much for joining us. Have yourself a great night, and we'll be in touch soon. You guys too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. Lovely, Jewel. She is. Uh, she's great. Very intelligent. Very sharp. Um, this fellow Greg said, "How did I been? How did I end up in here? I don't know, Greg, but thanks for stopping by. <laughs> this is the O Show. That was our guest, Caitlin Rice. We do this every Wednesday night, eight o'clock. Jeff and Jewel. We webcast. We talk. We have a great time. Our uh, future intern is with us as well. Little Joey's got her hat on, ready for the winter time. Uh, <laughs> don't forget, though, um, there is an app. There's an app to follow. All the great stuff that Caitlin Rice does. It is Caitlin Rice Fit. That is the app. www.caitlinricefit.com. You can find her on Instagram at Caitlin Rice Fit as well. Amazing pictures. Gorgeous woman, Jewel. The, the pictures really, uh, they motivate you. If you're a woman looking for, like I said, the nice butt or the nice abs or whatever, her pictures are very motivating. She does a great job and she's terrific. Absolutely. I, I'm 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 ready. <laughs> It is all man. Rachel. Rachel Green. Oh. That's awesome. Uh, yes, yeah, she's she's very good. Um, right. I I'm the same way, Rachel. I make every excuse on earth to not work out. And even my wife says, "Look, at your age, start working out. Get in shape. Like stop farting around." And so much better. Listen to Caitlin call me dude and calling people dude like dude and you're right like dude <laughs> get up off your ass and if right? I, you know, hey i've been telling you since we started <laughs> i'm telling did mommy you mommy work out yeah did 12, i work out today yeah 12 <laughs> ounce lifts there 12 you go. Ounce lifts. so let's go we're gonna go right back at it because we love talking to people so we're gonna go from sculpting your body to designing your body in artwork let me think is that a good segue jewel not bad. Oh my. Yes. Uh, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm getting too good at this stuff. Too good at this stuff. Anyway, uh, our next guest, this is the Lookout Local segment. What we do is we like to get people from the Pennsylvania area, Philadelphia, and beyond. And we'd like to talk about what they do and, and the great talents that they have. Because a lot of them out there are just great stuff. Uh, tonight, uh, a young lady that I kind of found on Facebook years ago, you know, back in the day when you could just find people on Facebook you're interested in and you get to know them and all that kind of stuff. And... Uh, it was Bridget a long time ago. I, I like her tattoo look and her piercings and all that. And I always thought she was cool. And then when we did this segment, she absolutely said she'd like to come on and talk about what she does. And she's going to do it for us tonight. She is a piercing artist. One hell of a cool individual. I'm going to pop her name right up on there. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring to the show Bridget McAdams. Bridget, good evening. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Thank you so much for being on. Uh, your excitement. Leading up to this has been amazing. I cannot thank you enough for how interested you are in being here. We're interested in having you as well. I want to get right into it because as everybody can see right off the bat, just awesome tattoos. I know, <laughs> you. I know you're, you're big into that. So tell us right off the bat, what got you into piercing art? Because not just piercing, like in, anybody can go to the mall and get pierced, but this is like an art form. Tell us all about it. Um, so I started um, an apprenticeship at a shop. Um, well, I've been in the industry for 14 years now. Um, and there's definitely a different um, degree with piercing. You have your basic piercings, advanced piercings, um, what they call a senior advanced piercing artist. Um, so the shop that I initially started at, there was a lot of people coming back with problems that I noticed a lot of um, the piercers who worked there weren't able to resolve people's problems or no guide them from one point to another. And it's there was just a really big gap in the market for just piercing centric shops. And how, how did you find the love for it? Like when, when was your first tattoo? When was your first piercing? Um, so my first tattoo was 1994. Well, wow. <laughs> I'll be 43 in a couple months. So I definitely have, 
I definitely have tattoos that are old enough to drink. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I, I started getting tattoos back in the day when they put your stencils on with speed stick. And the wow. first guy who tattooed me was a um, this uh, older truck driver <laughs> who had a tattoo shop that was open when he happened to be home. So. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. I was going to say, did he have a tattoo shop or is this a truck driver like, hey, babe, want a tattoo? Or? No, he had a shop, but it was open when it was open. Oh, wow. I have yeah. to, were you ever like a guinea pig? Because I have this one on my wrist and uh, Lord, I mean, thank God it looks good. But it was 25 bucks and it was, you know, an apprentice who didn't have a shop yet. And uh, were, were you ever a guinea pig and do you ever regret any tattoos that you have? I, um, I mean, I, I had an ex that was just off of his apprenticeship. So I do have a few of his tattoos that I'm currently working on fixing. Mm. Um, one of the girls that I work with is graciously fixing them for me. I wouldn't say that I really regret any of my tattoos. I feel like everything's been like a learning experience or, you know, there are different uh, keynotes in life and markers and reminders of where I was at a certain place in time and experiences and people I met along the way. Awesome. Let, let's get to the, the nitty gritty. I was going to slowly go into this, but I got to go right into the heart of it. What are some of the more obscure places people get tattooed? What are some of the places, I mean, um, pierced. Sorry, we're here for piercing. That's fine. What, are, what are some of the more obscure places you've pierced? And what are some places that you kind of steer people away from getting pierced, if there's any? Um. So I, there's definitely piercings. Like sometimes people will come to me for a piercing and it doesn't fit their anatomy. And I'm going to tell them right away, this isn't safe for you. This isn't going wow. to heal properly for you. This isn't going to be visible. Um, you know, especially with like inner ear piercings have become more popular lately, like the day and the rook and not everybody has an anatomy where that's going to fit them properly. And rather than risking it migrating and scarring them or causing tissue damage, I'll tell them like, this doesn't fit you. Let's do this instead. Um, as far as the more interesting places, um, <laughs> several years ago, um, some of the, the fetish piercings were very popular. Um, so there's um, there were certain requests for like rectal piercings. Oh, um, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> I, I heard just that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yes. How do you wipe? Like, exactly. <laughs> God, I don't know. Oh my God. I guess it slays the hemorrhoid dragon. I, I guess. I don't yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yikes. You had wow. mentioned, um, and we had, we had talked and we talked a lot leading up to this and you had mentioned about us addressing, cause I'm, I'm curious now, uh, how it affects your personal life, like being in the piercing and, and the tattoos. Cause it's definitely a culture, but it's also a culture. Like there's people who think, Oh, cause you do, piercings and tattoos you're in the freaky stuff crazy stuff how do you balance it so i mean you know there's definitely that trying to cut off from work i mean being a female in what was traditionally a male-dominated industry and that's changed a lot over the years but still there's always that push for um you know trying to find your place there so you're going to be more invested in your career um also too it's really important for me that my clients are able to reach out to me if they need something if there's a problem so i'm never really off um Gosh. so my phone's never off i'm always answering questions and it that comes back to having a wonderful partner who's willing to put up with me and um my boyfriend nick is fabulous and he is very um patient and supportive of everything that I do with my work. And I know it has to be frustrating at times. Um, and the other end of that too, is we go out places and people will recognize me and they'll come up and start talking to me or um, people that I don't know randomly will come up and start conversations with me. And more often, whenever we're out somewhere, I'm going to have some random person talk to me than not. Yeah. And um, he's I know that. Very <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And he's, he's always very gracious and very um, patient and deals with it with a smile. <laughs> and that helps a lot. Oh, that's awesome. so nice. Have you pierced him? No, I have not. Whoa. <laughs> will he Will he get pierced? Does he want to get pierced? Um, I, I've offered. And, no, thank you. <laughs> Come on, man. Let me <laughs> pierce your rectum. <laughs> Did you ever have a desire to pierce him while he's sleeping? Do you ever look at him like, I'm going to get him? Uh, yeah, so I, I keep trying to talk him into a nose piercing, so that might be kind of tricky. 
Can, can I ask you something? Yeah. Because it was college. I'm older now. Um, yeah. And I went with my girlfriend to this. It was kind of a well-known shop in State College, you know. And she went to get her nipples pierced. And I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to get a nose piercing. Like, I just figured, you know, before I have m my career that I want, you know, I figured I'd be in an office somewhere. I'm going to get my nose pierced. I always want to get my nose pierced. And the guy finished the job on my friend and uh, she got an infection and it was ended up bad but he looked at me he took one look at me I don't know if I'm straight on probably not <laughs> but uh he's like no I wouldn't get your nose pierced so I was like oh why not he's like because your your nose is lopsided now I'm looking at it weird <laughs> your nose is lopsided and it would bring attention to one side of your face I never went to anyone else. I was like, you know what? Nothing on my face. I'm done. I was so embarrassed. Um, ha have you heard of anything like that in the piercing community? So um, I, I don't want to throw shade, but I'm I'm going to. So um, <laughs> I, I find that a lot of piercers tend to deflect, um, wh especially if it's a shop that as a tattoo shop that also pierces and they're not really piercing centric. Um, what you end up with is like, oh, well, I don't have the proper jewelry to do that. Um, or, you know, that's maybe not a piercing I'm too familiar with. So they'll push it off on the client, which is never right. Um, you know, I, I flat out tell people, look, I don't have that in stock right now. Right. Um, you know, you'll need to come back, um, things like that. But I, I see a lot of people blaming, uh, you know, artists blaming like people's anatomy for like their lack of equipment or lack of training. It makes and, you so self-conscious. Like, don't do that. Yeah. No, I mean, I've, I've seen it happen like a ton of times. I had a girl come in and somebody had told her that her ear was too small to fit in an industrial bar. Okay. And there was absolutely no reason that her ear was not in any way um, deformed. And we did the industrial and it healed beautifully for her. Um, you know, I think sometimes, um, you know, to a good piercer is going to be able to look at something that's maybe a little off. And actually use that and be able to accentuate the other part that's maybe not as off and make the piercing fit the, the face better. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't asking for anything crazy to it. Like, just a little <laughs> stud or something. Uh, but I had another question. Sorry, Jeff, real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, my niece is very into piercing. And she actually pierced her own septum along with her nose, along with her gauging her ears. Um can you give me some advice? I can tell her not to do this. <laughs> um, so there, there's definitely concerns with doing your own piercings. You can cause tissue damage. Um, you know, I, I see the really extreme end of things where I've seen people try to pierce their own tongues and your tongue, if you hit the veins on the bottom, oh. it can become necrotic um, and actually turn black and oh. die. Um, there's, you know, obviously you can die. For, yeah. Uh, the tongue can die. Like, it'll <gasps> yeah. Oh my God. Um, there's, there's, there's two different arteries that run through your nose. Um, they're small, like you're not going to die and bleed to death, but they will bleed excessively. Um, and you know, as far as stretching your own ears, uh, there's a lot of kits out there, a lot of do it yourself kind of things. But honestly, I see so many, um, blowouts or um, if you stretch your ears uh, too quickly and too large, um, the, the ear will actually start to turn black on the bottom as well and that'll start to die. Uh, you have to be careful. You can't just abuse the tissue and expect it to heal well. Yeah, yeah I want her to go to a professional. Like I just don't want her to do it to herself. <laughs> but I, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. I will mm -hmm. definitely tell her. So tell us about the professionalism. What kind of training is involved? How long does it take to become uh, trained in the art of, of piercing? Because, I mean, I can only imagine you have to know, like you said, very intelligent feedback about the different body parts and how they handle it. What, what's involved? How extensive? Um, so for me personally, like I said, I had initially started an apprenticeship that I could just tell kind of early on I wasn't getting what I needed. I felt there was a lot lacking. So then I went and sought out somebody else who was really advanced with what he did. Um, you know, he's now working in Phoenix. It's cost like $250 just to sit in his chair. Like he's ridiculous wow. and he's fabulous, <laughs> but I had the pleasure of working under him back when. Um, so nowadays a typical apprenticeship is gonna run you a few thousand dollars. Your initial startup for piercing is gonna be around $22,000 with proper wow. equipment. Um, you know, you need just the autoclave in and of itself is a few thousand dollars. 
Um, you know, but it's very important to go through the apprenticeship, go through the proper training if you want to do it right. Um, you know, my apprenticeship was a year and a half total. Um, you know, that was basic advanced. Um, I also work with, uh, ch children, which a lot of piercers don't, um, you know, and minors and such. And that's a whole different set of like aftercare and, you know, I, teenagers are going to be teenagers and they're probably going to touch them too much and mess with them too much and change them too early. So you have to know how to correct problems that, you know, maybe wouldn't be a normal problem. All right. What do you think is the youngest? I know babies, I mean, parents have their babies done all the time. What do you think the youngest age is appropriate? Um, so, I mean, I, I do work with infants personally, my, in my personal experience and what I feel, um, is when the children are old enough to ask whenever they are That's asking, I whenever they are asking repeatedly on um, like my daughter, uh, just turned seven at the end of March. Nice. And she finally, she's like, I want to get my ears pierced. And then I made her ask for a month and uh, made sure that she was ready for it. And, you know, I explained to her, I'm like, this is going to hurt. It's going to feel like a shot. Because a lot of times I see parents come in and they're either trying to surprise their kids, which is never good. Surprise yeah. needles are never a good thing. Um, <laughs> or they, um, you know, I, I won't force or strain a child. Um, especially with young girls, it's really important for them to have consent over their body. Um, so I'm not going to have a parent come in and want to hold their screaming child down and have me pierce them. I don't. Yeah. Care. Yeah. Um, you know, if you say no to your body, I'm not touching your body. But if you come in and you're anxious and nervous, we'll get through it together. We'll talk through those tears. We'll figure <laughs> out why you're upset. We'll talk about my tools and we'll get you through it. But if you're telling me no, then no means no. I'm glad you said that because I, I, I feel the same way. And, you know, my daughter asked me last year when she was almost six and I was like, okay. And then she asked me again. I'm like, okay. Then I feel comfortable taking her, but I just couldn't see. I mean, a, a teacher and I just, uh, with, with my own, you know, that's just yeah. what I felt. So, so yeah, that has to be, um, that has to be a kind of, kind of a, uh, Touch the subject too, you know, when, yeah. when a parent's asking for something and you're like, ah. Uh. Yeah, and I mean, I see that a lot too. The other end of that is, um, you know, kids are going to be anxious to change their piercings. And then that becomes, oh, well, we changed right. too soon. Or they wanted these cute Mickey Mouse earrings that were maybe made out of a metal that we're really not sure what it was. Ooh. And then that becomes a whole other issue trying to heal an allergic reaction. Yeah. I know, especially some of the cheap cheap yeah. jewelry can really I, I've had my ears pierced five times in the same ooh, uh, in my lobe it's like it kept getting infected I don't know <laughs> I, I still don't my, my one closed do you know why that, that happens like I've had the same piercing in the same spot and one just repeatedly <laughs> repeatedly keeps closing so there's usually something re-irritating the skin and it's usually a sensitivity to the metal um, okay. so the best metals are going to be titanium or implant grade surgical steel for piercings. There's no nickel, no lead with titanium. It's not magnetic. So they can be left in during an MRI. Um, you know, assuming your MRI tech's cool. Um, but when you start getting into other metals, like a lot of times people think, Oh, sterling silver or 14 karat gold, they're precious metals, but they're not pure. And mm. when they're mined, they're really soft and really brassy. So they add nickel to the jewelry so they can actually to the metal so they can make jewelry out of it to make it wider, to make it firmer. So mm. then people who are extremely sensitive to nickel are going to have an allergic reaction to gold and silver and things like that. Wow. Um, so it's always good to stick with something that's really pure, um, implant grade, hospital grade, you know, um, even- I'm just cheap. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, there's, there's some really good companies out there now, like titanium is becoming like kind of more out there. And then also too, there's, um, there's a material called, it's surgical plastic or bioplast. Um, and it's really hypoallergenic too. Some people don't find it comfortable because it bends a little, you know, because it's it's softer. But it, it's completely hypoallergenic as well. Wow, that's very really informative. Thank you. <laughs> well, a lot of people think because and like it's our goal to get somebody to give us tattoos on the show. Like we want somebody to come on and tattoo us while we do the show. But that's neither here nor there. Everybody's schedule's busy. I get it. But <laughs> it's not. I mean, there are experts in the field and you in your field you have been published by magazines you've been interviewed before tell us about some of the the thrills of that tell us about some of the publishing that has been done on your work 
Oh, I mean, well, I've been doing this for a really long time. And, you know, obviously I started out like in a small shop and I would see maybe a couple piercings a day. Um, and well, now I'm seeing myself booked out for, you know, sometimes a couple weeks at a time. And I'm seeing 40 to 60 clients a week, um, sometimes up to 80 if, you wow. know, it's really, wow. yeah. And um, so, I mean, you know, with that, with the constant use of skill and technique and constant trial and error, you learn a lot. Um, so, I mean, I've had a different, I've done that, uh, articles for Media Vault Publications and Tattoo Envy. Um, most recently, I was featured in uh, Metal Mafia, which was a really big honor for me. That is my supplier. Um, awesome. So they're a national supplier for piercers all across the country and tattoo shops all across the country. And, um, you know, having the, the cover and having the feature for the month was wonderful and awesome. really exciting for me. That's awesome. So what are, what are your future goals? Um, you know, I, I, I don't really know that I have any, I'm really super content with my life and where I'm at right now. Um, you know, you know, like I said, I'm not super young anymore. I'm happy where I work. I work in a lovely studio. Um, I, it's all female. So that's really, you know, kind of a nice change of pace working in this industry. Um, you know, my kids are wonderful. My boyfriend's amazing. I kind of just feel like, I'm. In a good place. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That's awesome. And it, it seems simple. Like I said, you go through the world of social media and it's just great because you're in love with your craft. You're in love when people respect it. And you're also in love with life. And I love seeing that. I love seeing happiness and progress from you. Bridget means a lot. Um, so the, the couple of companies, the one is uh, Creatrix Collective. Yes. And the other is one is Chaos Piercing. Yes. Chaos Piercing is is me. That's my, my branded name and my LLC. Um, Creatrix Collective is the tattoo shop that I work at currently. Awesome. Nice. And there's a, there's a website, www.creatrixtattoo.com. It's scrolling down the bottom. And uh, Irish Gale, USA, Comcast.net. Is that the best place for people to reach you for appointments? Yeah. The, um, I usually primarily book through um, Chaos Piercings on Instagram, Facebook, or Google Business as well. Okay. Um, it's chaos piercings on all three. Awesome. And um, roughly, so you're not quite uh, Philly area, you're a little bit of outside Philly, <laughs> roughly uh, what, what part of town? So our, so our viewers now. Creat Creatrix Collective is in Kimberton. Um, it's Phoenixville um, outside okay. Philly Forge, um, I guess is the best way to know it. Now I, I do tend to work out of several different shops um, as of right now with, everything and the COVID restrictions and such, um, the shops that I typically take walk-ins at aren't doing walk-ins. Everything's by appointment. Sure. So, like typically there's a shop called, um, FMT tattoo in Lansdale that I would be at monthly. Um, I haven't been back there since reopening, um, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm only at Creatrix right now. Oh, I live near Lansdale. So yeah, I'll be I'll be hitting you up, <laughs> making those appointments. You know what, that whole shop, that whole shop is fabulous. Justin's great, Shane's great. Shane just did a huge tattoo piece on my leg, so that's amazing. That's yeah, definitely, Jewel. Um, yeah. And <laughs> between Jewel and, and my wife, between piercings and tattoos and all, you know, you got new fans. My wife has become obsessed with. It. She's got eight now. She if it was up to her, she'd get one a week. Um, <laughs> the The one I've always wanted to ask about, of course, is the neck and and chest piece. It, how long did it take or is it still a work in progress? So th that's finished. Um, it goes all the way, you know, to, to the tips of my shoulders. Um, I believe it was about 13 hours. It was several different settings. Wow. Um, Shannon um, from Grim Tattoo did it for me. Um, she was at Seven Stores at the time, but she's now at Grim Tattoo. Um, she's phenomenal. Um, you know, obviously. But uh, I, I, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I gave her just like a rough guideline and I was like, here, you know, um, do what you want to do. And so I really, I had no idea what she was doing until I walked into the shop that day. Wow. Yeah. I just realized that was a tattoo shop, by the way. <laughs> what <laughs> is that? Um, but it, it's a cool, it's a cool front they have going on there. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, like I said, make sure you look up Bridget if you're into um, the piercings. You can find her on Facebook, of course. Uh, her name's just laying out there, but there's a business page, so be kind. Um, and of course, www.creatrixtattoo.com and Chaos Piercings, Irish Gale, USA, Comcast.net. You can also find Chaos 
Piercing the Edge on Google Business. Instagram, Facebook, it's all over the place. Bridget does amazing work. You are even more charming than I could have imagined. This was really a pleasure, and I'm so glad you agreed to do it with us tonight. Um, you came out, you really kicked ass for us, and, and I thank you. And we would love to have you come back again in the future. Oh, I would love that. Thank you guys so much for having oh. me. Absolutely. Keep us, keep us posted. Like I said, when we had the last girl on that did the college coaching, she said a couple people reached out uh, from seeing the show and went and got her work. So hopefully people come to you. I know you're busy right now and it's going to be busy for a while. So just be patient because we're talking about an absolute professional here, not just any run of the mill. Bridget McAdams, a terrific job tonight. Thank you so much for joining us on the Emily Yo Show and we'll talk Thank very you. soon. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> That was absolutely awesome, Jewel. That that was great. Um, and like I said, I mean, it's people you meet from the from social media. Like nowadays, people go, "Oh, social media is just that and the other thing," but social media is also great for these kind of things. Uh, found Bridget a long, long time ago. Was always intrigued by I said the tattoos and the piercings and all that. And she just seemed cool, and she is cool. We speak here and there, and when this segment came up. We discussed it, and she said she'd absolutely love to come on. So uh, hopefully people go and check her out. Speaking of people checking out and people that we got to reach out to and say hello to, it is our newfound mom, Steve Show mom, <laughs> Alyssa Green, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you're late, but it's okay. You're here, and we love you for it. Thank you so much. Of course, anybody that doesn't know, uh, Rachel Green, our guest from a few weeks ago, an amazing artist. This is her mom. She's become a big fan of ours, and we've become a big fan of your daughters. Absolutely love her music, and that is what we do here on the O Show. We bring people together through music, through tattoo arting, through working out. My brother and his partner want to come on and talk football, and you know what? It's going to happen. I'm going to have them on. I'm going to have them on around playoff time because this is where we're going to drop the gauntlet. And he thinks ah, his brother doesn't want to have him on. And I know they want to be goofy. And that's fun because we're like being goofy here. But come playoff time, we're going to have them guys on. We're going to do some some playoff stuff. We love you, too. I'm about it. We love you, too. Yeah, definitely (laughs) want to have them on and smack talk and shit talk. And it's going to be a disaster. Now, Jewel, I got to bring this up to you. And you're going to laugh. A couple weeks ago, we picked on your mom. Because your mom likes to give (laughs) your mom likes to put on the angry emoji. (laughs) Bridget's Bridget's boyfriend gave an angry emoji. <laughs> Why? Why do people do this? I don't know. Maybe Bridget left the mess down. Maybe it will come off as controversial, and people are like, "Ooh, what's this about?" <laughs> I'm yeah, angry some, about this. We had some guy tonight that didn't even know how he got on here, so you know, <laughs> he left quickly after that. <laughs> That's so funny. That is hilarious. Thank you very much to both Caitlin Rice and Bridget McAdams tonight. Yes. Two awesome guests. I really love it. And like I said, Bridget is, um, you know, I don't know if I even explained it right. There's so many people in the tattoo field, the piercing field, that people think you can just go to anybody. But there's people that actually treat it like a craft. And we had a few weeks ago when my wife uh, brought us Jeremy Umstead. And, and Jeremy's very much into it. She said his place is clean, meticulous. He does great work. And as a tattoo artist, now we have Bridget. Please make sure you look her up if you're into the the piercing thing. It doesn't sound like it's that far from the Philly area. It sounds maybe, I don't know, outside of Valley Forge, could be 40, 45 minutes, whatever. Sounds like it's worth it. She's been published in magazines. She takes tremendous pride in her work. So awesome. Out by my way. I'm going to drag Duck by her ear and I'm going to take (laughs) her. To a professional. That's Yes. I can't imagine, like, pierce my own septum. Oh, God, man. I'm telling you. People really do some crazy stuff. It sounds painful as hell. I'm, I'm like in pain just listening to some of the things between the workout regimen. <laughs> like, oh, pain. I'm hurting all over. I did want to share this with you, though. I, I was going to put it on before Caitlin got on, but I, I missed the chance. But I got to show it to you now because this is <laughs> – and, and it's awesome. I love stuff like this. This is a, a commercial – that she did. The product is uh, adrenaline energy drink. The reason why I'm going to share because it it's so cool. Like this commercial is very cool. Watch, watch the commercial and it's full. I got to blow the screen up first. I blew us up by accident. Sorry, Jewel. I'll pull us back. <laughs> oh, technology. Anyway, watch this commercial. Very cool. This is uh, Caitlin Rice, who was our guest tonight. Uh, this is a uh, like a 45 second commercial spot for. Um, Adrenaline energy drink here on the uh, the O Show. We'll be right back. 
I missed it. <laughs> ah, there we go. Make this Some prowlers, some prowlers are sober. My brother through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage. I'm going through something. That's why I ain't calling. Pretty awesome stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, it was absolutely awesome. Our, our guest from this evening, Caitlin Rice. The commercial was so cool. And I, I again, in looking at it and trying to find things to, to talk about them all. Unfortunately, I should have played that before. I got a lot of questions about it. It's just I so am, cool. I know. I wanted to hear what you listened to. Didn't even but, get to that. <laughs> I know when they ask her what kind of music she does get motivated to because that that's that's like big to me also. I'm big in the music. But the commercial's cool. Like every can color matches a new outfit she has mm -hmm. on. And she's tossing the can to herself in a different setting and a different setup. That was very cool. It is very cool. Makes me motivated. What well, I know what I listen to. What do you do you have any pump up music? Uh very much into a lot of things Pantera, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like I like hard driving sounds. I know our musical tastes are a little different. So what, what gets you motivated? Uh, <laughs> a lot of Eminem, a lot of club, um, you know, throwing some metal here and there and get angry. Urgh. Urgh, I like that. My wife actually, um, you know, like I said, doing the CrossFit and, and there'll be times when we'll be in the car and she'll be like, I, I know this song, be like Pantera or something. Like, I know this song. They play the CrossFit. Like she's not a big metal head, but she'll hear the music and it just reminds her of working out. So Remember that song? I'm a beast. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I like that. I like that song. Um, speaking of music, another great segue, Jewel Tady. We're going to talk about a couple upcoming guests because we have uh, one that is set up for next week who's already promoting it, and that's awesome. We're very excited to have her. And then we have a, a new guest announcement for December 2nd. Now, the 25th, uh, for people who are watching, 25th, we have not decided yet because it's the night before Thanksgiving. We know it's a big party night. We know family's going to be out and doing things, but we also know family could be all sitting around watching the Yosher. So we might do a special thank you thing, a small piece. We haven't decided yet but check your local listings as they say in the business yeah. you like that huh <laughs> <laughs> let's get on to what we have next week we have a tremendous guest and this young lady has been super excited about her appearance since we announced it got over a month ago she's actually been on the hook we're excited anyway, we're very excited lisa orlando ladies and gentlemen, a very beautiful very sweet new friend and fan of the show she always likes our stuff and shares and tunes in uh she's a local philadelphia artist just booming with some great new songs very excited to have her on lisa orlando november 18th we're gonna play a couple of tunes from her and talk about the, the music scene here in philadelphia very excited i can't wait to have her on jewel you excited for that one I'm so excited. And she's local she's so pretty i'm so excited i'm glad she's already excited that just shows Excited. That's amazing. And yeah, I'm sure everybody gets excited. Like it, it you know, it's a little harder to keep up with, with Caitlin because she got so many followers and, and such a busy schedule. But when she came on, she just said how excited she was to be here. And, and that's awesome. And I know Bridget was counting down and uh Don and Burley for football, they're counting People are just excited <laughs> to do anything these days. Right, pretty much. I agree. Now the announcement, this is new. This is December 2nd. And Jewel Tady, man, I, I'm gonna go on here. You, you talked about what motivates you, the club scene, club music, heavy beats. <laughs> no, seriously, and heavy beats and stuff like that. That was never really, it wasn't really my thing. And then I came across these two artists and the young lady posted, hey, thank you, 5,000 streams, we're moving along. And I said, all right, they're from Philly. Let me check it out. And I'm blown away. The beats her voice it is absolutely amazing i did some research and found it's a brother and sister team and they're going to be on our show december 2nd and they go by the name of it's actually their, their last name they go by the name of urbano yes jewel tady i gotta tell you man this is them here this is uh marissa and john urbano and man joy like 
I put it on my Apple Music on my list. I listen to it. And I'm like, man, this is so good. And it's not even my style of music, but that's how much I love Philly and these new artists. And I'm, you know, I'm listening to the other the other day. I had regular music on. I put it on shuffle. Metallica comes on, and um, whatever. Red Britney comes on, all the stuff. <laughs> and I'm listening to this song. And I'm like. This band is really good. This isn't even my normal music. I really like this. And I look down, of course, and it is Urbano. Just awesome. It's just all our Philly area artists are amazing. And that's why they have to be included on everyone's playlist. And that's what we like to do. We like to give you what is best from our area. Absolutely. And these guys are definitely worth checking out. Very sweet, too. Like the loving family culture where I invited Marissa on. She's like, look, it's me and my brother. We don't do it separate. We do it together. And that's great. I'm all about it. Mm -hmm. um, they're they're good looking kids. They are. <laughs> they're uh, attractive people as well, but very talented. The music is great. And they do collaborations with different artists. We're going to talk about all that. We're going to play a couple of songs that are brand new for them uh, uh, December Second, we talked about a lot. They made sure they worked out the schedules with each other. Um, got back today and said, you know, I got a show tonight. I'd love to announce it. And Marissa said, yep, we talk. Let's do it. December 2nd. Urbano is the name. U-R-B-A-N-O. Another great Philly I'm band. <laughs> I know, right? Is that your beeping that's been going on? <laughs> I keep hearing beeping. It might be. I just, oh. put, I just put new <laughs> batteries on all the fire alarms. So if they're beeping, I've got a problem on my hands. Henry up there cooking food. Maybe. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So we have topics, Jewel Tady. Um, yes. Oh, my uh, cousin Donna said, Billy Eilish. Is, oh, is, that no. motiv is that motivating? Billy Eilish? Motivating? Um, mm, I have like a club mix of copycat. That That's pretty. Joey, Joey loves her. That's like her favorite. <laughs> Not a big fan, but anyway. <laughs> Oh, she's, she's so young. She's like 18 and she's just yeah, killing wow. it. So, you know, I've been listening to a lot <laughs> like the past two days. Christina Aguilera. I forgot all the hits she had. <laughs> I I love her. I, I always have. I was always like. I, I like love her. Britney too. I love Britney. I've been listening to like Spice Girls and Britney and Factory. But all the throwbacks, man. Man, that is throwback. That's mm -hmm. like, I was like 30. <laughs> <laughs> As a child, way back, yeah, I know we're we're well aware of our age difference, but yeah, I mean, I love, <laughs> I love getting back into throwback stuff. And like the other day, like today, I'm driving in the car, and it was like, man, this song from way back when it was um, Ocean Avenue by Yellow Card, and it's like 2003, which it's a long time ago. Oh my god, you know what that <laughs> reminds me of the Tannen booth. <laughs> The always come on in like Hollywood town. Ah. My high school days. Jeez. Even I come on, I'm like, man, this song's like way back. Like I know it's way back just from where I was in my life. And I'm looking, let me look it up. I'm like, man, 2003. It's not mm. that old. I'm like 17, almost 18 years ago. Yeah, I was 17. Wow. <laughs> Wasn't that in the song? You uh, were just 17 or just 18 mm -hmm. and it felt so right. Sleeping oh, all no. day, staying up. Oh, man. Great. I love that song. Yeah, I saw it. And I'm like, man, throwback. Um, some topics that we didn't hit on, stuff I'm going to get on earlier, and of course, uh, a massive one here and a well played out um, thing. A very sad rest in peace to uh, Mr. Alex Trebek, longtime host of Jeopardy. Just one awesome human being. Uh, from what I gather from what people always said, he was truly as intelligent as he played on the show. He was always learning new things about topics and always deep into the subject. 80 years old, a tremendous battle with cancer. He actually filmed his last 35 episodes, Jewel, while still suffering from uh, cancer. And the amazing thing is, and I'm, I'm going to want you to elaborate on this a little bit because I like when you get deep. Um, ABC has scheduled his last episode to be here December 25th, Christmas night. While families are around and all, you know the whole world is going to tune in to see the last episode of Jeopardy and Alex Trebek. Some, some reflection, if you will. I, I'm telling you, it's been <laughs> one of the worst two weeks. And, you know, I lost two uncles on both sides of my family. And losing Alex is like losing another family member. Like, he has just been a constant. Um, My family has 
always, I mean, we religiously watch Jeopardy. My my father will blow anyone away, except for like pop culture, and and he he brings me in for that kind of stuff. But and then uh, I, I moved out to Ambler, close to my brother and Chrissy, and and they love Jeopardy, and they are whizzes. I mean, Chrissy and Jay, they just kill it, and. It's just a, such a part of my family. I go to my other sister's in Berks County, and she watches it every night. Like, it's just been such ingrained in our family that, I mean, our love for trivia and knowledge. Um, when I was little, you know, my my dad bought, bought the Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> I used to read it for fun. Like, what? We were just such a fan of the show, and he was so, so knowledgeable, and he was the hardest worker. He would stay in there, and pronunciation was very important to him because, you know, yes. he questions. I mean, he would do everything from, quote, Lizzo to, you know, Homer and the Odyssey. Like, he was just all over the place, but he filmed his last episodes like two weeks ago. Yeah. So now, I mean, I didn't want to watch. I didn't want to watch any tributes. I, I came to my parents and my dad's like, he went, oh, my God, oh, my God. I, I, I just could not believe it because he's just always there. So uh, yeah. at least we have these episodes, and that's what the producer said and Alex intended. I, I waited until today to watch the tribute from the producers from the show because that's how upset I was. I didn't want to watch anything. And of course, I broke down when he was like, "This is Jeopardy!" Like, how yeah. freaking sad! No one, I don't care, Drew Carey, no one is going to be able to fill Alex's shoes. Agreed. They mentioned names like uh, former great champ Ken Jennings, and they've mentioned a few people, no. and, and it's hard. And I have the heart. I mean, Bob Barker was legendary, also, but Drew Carey seems to have done the job. Barker was. Drew, I like Drew Carey. I used to watch, you know, the show. Alex, Alex Trebek, the delivery, the mm -hmm. demeanor, the way he handled the program was like no other. Um, I, I do like, you know, when you talk about people taking, I do like Jane Lynch on The Weakest Link. I don't know if you watched that yet. I, I, I do like, like her. Yes. I enjoy it, it's her. It's not going to be the same. Whoever it is, like, there will always be, there'll be like someone else hosting Wheel of Fortune. Like, it's just, yeah. And Jeopardy so, was just a little bit nearer and dearer to, I think, America's hearts. Agreed. So for me, I'm thinking maybe we, Sadly, pull the plug on Jeopardy, so to speak. And it sounds awful, but you're not going to. The greatest trivia show out there, though. Like, I, I love trivia. Cash Cab was extremely hard. <laughs> oh, I love Cash Cab. I would answer more Jeopardy questions than I would Cash Cab. <laughs> Question. We would uh we would go to uh, my parents' house for dinner when we got older, of course. Then we would go to my parents' house for dinner, me and my brother, and we would just sit there and compete and count how many answers we got right. And it got to be like an argument across the table. My father said, "I'm gonna shut this damn thing off." What is uh, the French Revolution? <laughs> and I'm like, "See, you're doing it too." You just like you know, and of course, what is? And that's legendary. You know, answering a form of a question just so unique. Rest in peace, Alex Trebek. 80 years old. It's not going to be the same. Remember Christmas night, folks, December 25th, whatever you're doing, you know, we go through hard times. People argue more than ever and people always seem to be at odds, whatever. Uh, take the time, come together December 25th. Not only is it Christmas, it's going to be Alex's final episode of Wheel of Fortune. And I know the world will be watching. I know I will. And I am going to get misty eyed. There's no doubt about it. It's just a staple in American households. Like, it's just what it was. Uh, absolutely. And uh, from one staple of sadness to one staple of happiness, happy birthday to the United States Marine Corps. Uh, some of the hardest working men uh, for our country there is. Uh, it was a couple days ago, but happy birthday to the United States Marine Corps. Of course, on Veterans Day also means a lot as well. These guys do the work that a lot of people will not do. And um, protecting us, working hard, and just being great staples of this country, Jewel. Do you know any Marines, any Marines close to you and your family? Um, I believe my cousin, not too close, but I think my cousin was a Marine. Yes. It's awesome. That that's tough. I've known a few and they, they come out very well structured individuals. It, yes. It's, it's strenuous, but. Uh, oh, my neighbor was yes. And he was very, very, very strict person. <laughs> 
Our man uh, Austin said, Army strong. Hey, eh, Army's good too, you know? Ah, that's what I meant to ask Caitlin about also, because Caitlin mentioned that she was oh, brought yes. up as, a, as an Army brat, and I did kind of kind of miss that, sorry. but we'll have to have her back like tomorrow. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Caitlin, some very kind words. We're really thankful for this. Um, great job, guys. Love the show. That was from her uh, her handler and her manager, Alex Johnson. Alex has been keeping me in contact with Caitlin. I, I I gotta admit, Alex, I I kind of begged, I begged, like I've been asking for weeks, and he even said he's like, "Hey, I just got this." He's like, "We we have so many mails coming in, and we're just so busy." And he's like, "We will work on something." And uh, he came through, and he was awesome. And I, you know, he said, "Remind me today of which I did." And later on, he said, "You know, no problem, we got it." He made an appointment, like it's very professional. I thank him for that. Caitlin was amazing, very uh, very smart. Very stern, very fit. She she's incredible. I, I love her. I'm a big fan. Yeah, she was amazing. So thank you, thank you once again. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and I, I love dude. I love when women keep saying dude. I like that. Dude has become yeah. like my word again. And of I course, say uh, I know I say it a lot. And of course, uh, Bridget McAdams, fantastic as well. She had some audience come out and just you know praise her, tell her, tell us what a great job she does. So check these people out. It's what we do here. We uh, introduce you to just a whole wide world of great things. we got a couple of musical guests coming up in the next few weeks as well. Uh, more topics, Jewel Taney, and this is one that, you know, some people want to touch it, some people don't. I want to get your opinion on. It's not really controversial. It's something that's very big in America right now and across the country, and that is the, uh, the supposed 90% effective COVID vaccine that Pfizer has just announced. Um, not going into too much about it, just what you think about it. Would you want an initial vaccine? Is this something you would wait for? How are you feeling? I, you know, I constantly, I wish I didn't, but I constantly watch the news anymore. <laughs> it's not a habit, I yeah. guess, from like, ugh. But uh, I have been keeping myself up to date on all the latest with COVID because it's rampant where we are right now. Yeah. So they said, like, I was like, oh, my God, 90%. That's amazing. But for seven days, seven Days, so in a week, where are you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's just crazy. I mean, if you work with the public, it's like, what are you to do? I honestly, I can't give you an answer because I'm just. We'll see when it gets here. It's supposedly getting to our you know most vulnerable population first at the end of 2020, and then it doesn't look like we'll see an actual like distribution because it has to be kept at such a low temperature. Like most doctor's offices across the nation can't handle it. So yeah. probably summer of 2021, like who the hell knows? I'm just praying for everyone. It's just been a year. It has been a year. Definitely something we need to get past and get over. And, but by an improper measure, uh, I've also heard though from people that, uh, Pfizer's version is the same, and I forget the company's name, Marenta. Mar Moderma. Moderma. I always say it wrong. Sorry, Moderma. They, there is pretty much a carbon copy of Pfizer's formula, so that brings that much more out, and Johnson & Johnson is close as well. So a lot of these big manufacturers are close. And let's Yeah, once oh. they have it, I guess they can tweak it. But yeah. Like, hey. We don't want to be super guinea pigs either, you know. Yeah, at this at this rate, stick me right in the ass for that. I could care less. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I say that, but you know, I, I, I take out the old Ivan Drago thing from Rocky Five or Rocky Four. If he dies, he dies. Um, but yeah, so hopefully that turns out to be something. Big news uh, last week. We have a lot of them on our show, Jewel. We have a lot of uh, uh, of gay artists that come on our show, and um, Nevada is recognizing gay marriage. It's a big step. Um, a lot of people, you know. We're leery about it, and but now they're recognized. Officially, it's a big deal that you know gay marriage is now like legal in Nevada. So congratulations to those people. Those Wait a minute, people. right? I I, it's legal everywhere. <laughs> I was surprised to hear that too, but now it's being recognized in Nevada, and I was stumped by seeing the article. And I even commented, and, and you know, I was bashful of it. I'm like, no, really, seriously. Like I'm trying to find out, but apparently, it, it's a big thing that gay marriage is now being maybe performed, recognized. And Nevada, if I'm ignorant and saying it wrong, feel free to correct me. ceremonies, I guess, in Vegas? I don't know. I mean, Vegas seems pretty uh, on top of the game. But 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's it's legal in all 15 states. I thought so, but I saw the article. I saw this article somebody posted. I'm like, you know, let me bring it up on the show. Maybe Jules got a little more light on it than I do. And I, you know, you don't want to ask because it sounds like you're being snarky if you ask, you know, somebody about it. I, I should ask Jimmy. Jimmy would know more than anybody. Mm. I'll ask Jimmy. I'll get into it with Jimmy and Ron, and we'll, we'll find I'm out. Sure, what's it's up. legal, but uh, Nevada, I think they let anyway. Right. <laughs> That's all, like how drunk you are. They're all, right. they're all about men and goats. Uh, whoa. All right, let's do man's cave scores real quickly because I've got a new little habit. And as you notice, I walked away from the big pile of uh, Funko Pops. That's still on my thing. But I got a new thing, John. I'm into low-end card collecting. Um, you buy cheaper cards of the hot stars and you watch them perform and you hope they're worth some money. And I picked up a couple and this is a... Um, this is a pink optic. It's one of the most popular inserts. This is Travis Fulgham, Philadelphia oh. Eagle. This is him in his lion day before he was an eagle. It's a Travis Fulgham rookie. One of the hottest rookies in the NFL right now. A mosaic. It's Clyde Edwards Hilaire from the Kansas City Chiefs. It's a beautiful silver mosaic insert card. <laughs> and the last one, Jewel, and this is like my favorite player in the NFL right now. Last year from 2019. DK Metcalf. Look at that baby. Look at it. Just mm. the rainbow colors in it and on shiny. The rookie cards, you buy them for a few bucks and then you sit on them and you watch them go up as these guys do great things. So hopefully, uh, I know I caved in. I'm an NFL guy here. Yeah. Oh, cool. Let me ask you, uh, what do you think of, uh, Ray? Ray, Ray. What do you think of, uh, Favre's comments? Uh, about the Eagles and Nick Foles. Yeah. Uh, you know, Peterson didn't seem all that happy about it. Peterson <laughs> got a little pissy. Like, mm -hmm. they're like, well, who are you to come out and say that? It, it's just a guy giving his opinion. He's a retired player. He says, hey, I think the Eagles are better off keeping false. Um, he's not doing great things in Chicago. He didn't do great things in Jacksonville. He didn't do great things in with the Rams. There's something about Nick Foles in this city that seems to change his performance. But I got to be honest. To me, a retired player's opinion is just an opinion. and. Doug Peterson really seemed to take it to heart. Really got extra upset about it. What do you think? I think he went overboard myself. I mean, it's done and over with, you know? It is old news. It's like, you know, you're retired. It's old. <laughs> right. <laughs> retired guys. On. You got to do with what you have. Exactly. That'd be like a former, like, stoop radio show host telling me and Joe how to run the Yosha. You know? Like... <laughs> I think it would be. Uh, uh, oh, I have a topic real quick that oh, okay. I want to. So this just came on as like right before we went on the show. But, you know, the Nintendo Switch. I'm a huge Nintendo yes. fan. Yeah. They actually released Metroid the game accidentally. And like without any notice, like people just got it and were like wow. buying it and playing it. Oh, my God. I would freak out, right? I mean, that's not even my game. But if I had a game that came up, like, for instance, they just released um, the demo for the new Zelda, Age of Calamity. And yeah. you could play a little demo, but it allows you to play, like, two boards. I got so sucked into this game this weekend. I was like, I had to beat it. I had to beat the demo. Because the real game doesn't come out until the 20th. But it's so good. Like, for... A button smasher game like do you know those games where it just allows you to like beat a thousand opponents and you just got to go in and like you know clear the field stuff like that but this one actually had like you know assignments and and, right. and things you had to do and it was pretty interesting and you got to be play you got to play as zelda like you got to play zelda fighting enemies at zelda like that's amazing that was pretty cool they have a little guy, and it's a mini guardian egg, and it's the new baby Yoda. Ah, oh, that's it's so awesome. cute. It's like an oh, enemy, they're, they're but it's, I don't know. I cut us off. Where am I at? Oh. Here we are. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm telling you, one of these days, technology. Well, guardian, guardians are the, the scariest, you know, enemy, well, second scariest enemy in the game. And to have this little guardian egg, it's like a little, you know. Stormtrooper that you want to hate but you can't because it looks like a little R two D two and mm. it's your friend. So I'm thinking it's a new baby. This game's gonna be big and Zelda two is gonna be pretty big. I gotta buy a real switch. I have you know Joey has the switch light. I gotta get a real switch for my gaming mm. <laughs> cravings. It's, it's funny how you mentioned that 
that it kind of got released by accident because it happens in the in the collecting world with the Funko Pops and such like that. They have like these exclusive releases and people like order them and they're already putting them online to sell them on selling sites before they even have it in their hand. Yeah. It's crazy. Like uh just settle down. <laughs> I know, right? I mean like because Funko Pop always has their exclusive sales and I'm always either out delivering beer or working, doing something. I always miss them. And then you go on Mercari and they're like 50 bucks. Yeah. And it says, will be shipped. Like they're using the picture that they use from the sale. <laughs> I swear to God. And they charge so much more. I try to get the, the Homelander from the boys and he's levitating in the Funko Pop. He's very cute. But like I go to buy it. They say it's available and no, it's a pre-order. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. But you know, you're going to get it cheaper that way instead of waiting for for it to get gobbled up and really be paying 50 and 60 dollars for it. I, you know, I didn't pay much for many. Motley Crue was probably the most expensive set, and I paid a hundred for all four, wow. which is which is huge because Nikki Six alone goes for like 90 to 100 dollars It's a very mm -hmm. hard piece. So to get the whole a girl had it on eBay, she put it up for a buck and a quarter for all four. I messed her, I said, I'll buy it for a hundred dollars right now. She said, You hit the PayPal, I'll turn off the ad, PayPal it, hundred bucks. She cut off the ad, got all four. It's a great set. I love it. And uh, we're going to walk through them again in a couple of weeks when I sit in front of the guys again. We're going to walk through some of them and have a little fun with Funko Pops. But yeah, Motley Crue, uh, definitely my favorite set. Nikki Six and the Red Sting um, wrestler, the Red Sting, my two top pieces. Love them. Very cool. Yeah, I definitely want to get that. You got me wanting to get more Funko Pops. I love them. And uh, after I got you uh, Batista, yes. your favorite. He's chilling there. I see him. <laughs> you say, and I listen. <laughs> Men, every time a woman talks, listen, because they're always mm. saying hints. Jewel, by the way, I got to inform you that real quickly, after the show's end, folks, like me and Jewel, we don't record, we don't edit, we don't like touch nothing. Show ends, we throw down the headgear, and we go about life. We might text a little bit. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> right, go to the bathroom. We might talk about how the show went. Uh, so we don't touch them. Now, keep my husband two weeks. Came in this morning, Jewel. About an hour for showtime. Covered in blue. The headset was <gasps> no. Oh, I had to wipe it down and clean it down. It was a nightmare. I still got blue on my arms when I was like on the table. And I forgot. There was like blue oh, all over God. these things from the Halloween it's episode. so funny. You know, you sent me that picture. I'm like, all right. And, like, I saw you for like two hours. I know you were that. No, you were that again. <laughs> Now, is that again? With a lighter blue, my wife did it, put a little foundation on. Uh, Troy David Hendrickson gave us some tips. Foundation, um, certain ways to remove it. So thanks, Troy. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, I got to go to you for makeup. And he's like, I'm not ashamed of that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> he knows all about it. Um, we talk a lot. Like I said, when you, you know, there's certain things that people disagree about in this world that aren't worth losing people over. Stop losing people. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. The, the brand color I was going to go with tonight is purple. You know, the red and blue mixture of America, red and blue, purple. Mix up, folks. Your neighbor is your friend. Oh, I, and, me and Greg, oh. Jeff disagree on everything. We do. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. At first, I thought she was going to say it's very orgasmic. I was worried about what she does during watching the show. That's, right. that's, <laughs> that's, that's our mom. Don't pick on mom. It is right. Thank you. We we are about being just raw, but in a fun sense. We don't script. We don't rehearse. We don't edit. We don't rehearse at all. We have no idea what's going to come out of each other's mouths. <laughs> Pretty much ninety nine percent of the time, we've had um, pre show disagreements about things we're doing and not doing. But it it, it never really gets to that point because that's not what we're here for. We're entertained at the end of the night. Jewel makes me laugh. I hope I make her laugh. I hope I make all you out there laugh. Ray Coleman says we're raw as poop. Thanks, Ray. <laughs> See, she laughed. Sorry, Mom. Ay, I'm, probably, ay, ay. I'm probably older than she is, and I'm calling her Mom. <sighs> uh, another great episode, Jewel Tady. A massive thanks to two terrific guests tonight. The uh, fitness guru, Miss Caitlin Rice. Thank you for joining us. And, of course, Bridget McAdams from our Lookout Local segment. And uh, you can find them. Rewatch the episode. I still got Bridget's information down the bottom. Creatrix Collective at www.creatrixtattoo.com. Chaos Piercing, which is her personal LLC. Irish Gale USA at Comcast.net to get appointments. Or check it out on Instagram, Facebook, and Google Business. 
at Chaos Pearson. Great show, Jewel. Let's not take too many vacations because I missed you. Thanks, my man, Ray Coleman. He said, "Good show." We gotta get Ray. We gotta get out and see Ray Coleman. So we're gonna get out and see all you people as soon as this COVID shit ends. Because I need live bands. I need bars. I need drunkenness. I need a three o'clock in the morning Uber and a cheesesteak. I need it. Right? What the hell? We'll get there, Jeff. Soon (laughs) enough. We will get there soon enough. I agree. Let's all just be patient and uh, let's take care of our fellow man. Uh, again, thank you for everybody that tuned in. Uh, thanks to, um, I got to get his name right. I don't want to mess it up. Thank you to Alex Johnson for his great, great work. Bring Caitlin to us. Donna Young, thank you very much. Great show. Donna is going to hook us up with the uh, little award ceremony that we're doing for the uh, Pennies in Action Fund. Um, Donna, you let us know what we got to do, and we will advertise it and try to get some people here and congratulate people that just did great work for the pennies in action uh, for cancer research and different kinds of methods to help cure cancer. Ray Coleman, you have a great night as well. Everybody have a great night out there. For Jewel Tady, I am Jeff the Shark Perini, reminding all of you more now than ever, don't be a douche. And be nice to people. Even ones that say stuff that's different than you. (laughs) I will leave you with my red, white, and blue pants that I stole from my wife. Yeah, baby. (laughs) Jewel Tady is going to, Jewel's already messaged me like, how do I get in those pants? Wow. Thank you to our newfound friends from Twitch, LinkedIn. Me and you were going to have a little talk. They were not. Important enough to be uh, live on LinkedIn. We are live on Twitch, YouTube, the Super Dinner Network on Facebook, my personal page, www.theyoshow215.com is the website. And don't forget, of course, ladies and gentlemen, get your fill of Loso beer, www.loso brewing company.com. It's L O S O, available in a lot of great restaurants right now. We got so many great varieties out there. I'm looking to make some big moves there as well. The O Show, Loso, and my man Kevin Kirko, the whole O, everything but I know, making this move. Jewel, I'm rambling again. I thought we got rid of this ramble shit. No, it's good. good. I think you got it all. (laughs) Thank you. Jewel Tatey, you are the best. I love you. I realized how much I missed you that last week. It's been dreadful. Mm -hmm. Uh, So keep in touch. We'll see you next week with Lisa (laughs) Orlando. We will take you out. With our theme song, where fire cannot burn, St. Ricketts is the band, www.stricketts.com. Have a great night, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Boom. Oh
kindly answer this Was the point of it just to reach new heights of love? So I'm pulling the anchor and drifting away